Welcome to a special debate edition of the Whatever Podcast. I'm your host and moderator, Brian Atlas. A few quick announcements before the show begins. This podcast is viewer-supported heavy YouTube demonetization, so please consider donating through Streamlabs instead of Super Chatting as YouTube takes a brutal 30% cut. Some quick maths for y'all. So if you Super Chat 100, YouTube takes 30. If you donate 100, Streamlabs only takes 30. Streamlabs.com slash whatever. Link is in the description. For the sake of a smooth stream and debate, we have boosted the TTS triggers. Donations in Super Chats, $10 and up, will be displayed in stream overlay. Donations in Super Chats, $50 and up, will be read, answered. If you want to interact nearly instantly with us and weigh in on the debate, consider sending a TTS, text-to-speech message, $300 and up triggers TTS. TTS is via Streamlabs only. Please see the description for all triggers and full details. If the TTS is too disruptive, we might... We might shift them to uh, an interval where we just uh, go through all the TTS because if it's just too disruptive for the debate, we don't want it to be uh, ruining the quality of the show and debate. Oh, any super guys, any super chats and TTS need to be on topic, please. Uh, Destiny is not going to address any private relationship <laughs> details. You can still dunk on Jasmine and Lila if you want. <laughs> not Trent though. He is uh, he's a bit sensitive. So. True. Without further ado, I'm joined today by Destiny, famous internet personality, live streamer, and political commentator. Joining him is Jasmine Jafar, the self-described ho lawyer. She does uh, porn and OnlyFans. We have Lila Rose. She's the founder and president of the pro-life organization Live Action and Trent Horn. Trent earned master's degrees in the fields of theology, philosophy, and bioethics. Trent is an adjunct professor of apologetics at Holy Apostles College, and he is the author of nine books. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Brian. So uh, we originally planned to have a proper debate moderator who was going to join us. Uh, unfortunately, there was an emergency and they couldn't make it. So this is going to be a very laissez-faire when it comes to the moderation. For the most part, I'm just going to let you guys talk. The topic of today's debate, is sex work bad for society? And I think a good jumping off point, if you can each one by one summarize your position on this topic, starting with Destiny and then Jasmine and then Lila and then Trent, also we ought to define for each other in the audience what is meant by the term sex work? I mean, sex work strikes me as this sort of nebulous, vague term, meaning anything from taking non-nude lingerie photos all the way to selling $5 blowjobs in the back lot of a 7-Eleven. So uh, go ahead, starting with you, Destiny. Yeah, I think when we ask if uh, sex work is good or bad for society, I think it's important to recognize that there are forms of entertainment that we can consume that aren't necessarily like good, but they don't necessarily do a bad. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not consuming some things for entertainment purposes is like a thing we want to defend in society. I think broadly speaking, we do. We would say that like video games, for instance, aren't necessarily good, but I don't know if we would call them bad as long as they're enjoyed in an appropriate environment with an appropriate level of consumption. Um, so I think as long as we say that people want to buy sex work and people want to sell sex work, and if it can be done so in a way that is safe to both parties, and we can't see any like clear or obvious damage to society, then I think that that transaction ought to be protected. And I think I would say like all other forms of entertainment, we would say it's a good thing in society. Yeah, so I think uh, sex is a drive everybody has, and there's always going to be a demand for consensual sexual services, and there's always going to be people who are willing to supply it. I think a society that grants its citizens certain civil liberties and freedoms, like the ability, like sexual autonomy and the freedom to control their own sex lives, is better for society. Um, and I don't think adding money into that should really change anything. Um, I think anytime we're addressing whether something is good for society, we have to think of how society would look if we were to try to come in and remove that thing um, and I think for one there isn't at least compelling evidence that sex work is, or porn or any of these things are harmful enough that we should try to do that especially if we compare it to other things that we allow and also um, the t times that people have tried to come in and restrict those things um, haven't shown to be very successful. <coughs> oh, let's start with that. I like that. Okay and apologies for any coughing I've had a cough for three weeks and it still isn't going away but Anyways, thanks for um, your patience with me if I start to cough. I think that sex is an amazing and beautiful thing, and it has a design to it. Uh, it has a purpose to it. And I think to ignore that design is to live in an unreality 
that brings harm to oneself and other people. And sex can do two beautiful things. It can create intimacy and bonding and pleasure, which is amazing between two people. And it can also bring life into the world. And I think there's a ton of social data that shows that when you divorce sex from its meaning and you treat it like it's meaninglessness, but it, but like, like it has no meaning, a hedonistic view of sex leads to a lot of social ills and harm. It's destructive to the people that behave as if it's meaningless, and it's also destructive to people that um, are also hit by the consequences of that behavior, like a spouse in a marriage whose uh, partner is using porn and they're deeply unhappy, or the children of that marriage, or um, you know, promoting sex work leading to uh, sexual behaviors that can come, li bring life into the world, and then you have this life that uh, doesn't have committed parents who are going to raise them and, and love them. So I think we have to live in reality that sex has meaning, it has consequences, it's a beautiful and powerful thing, and a society that orders itself to recognize that meaning um, is going to be a healthier, happier society, and that's what I want for everyone. <coughs> Yeah, I would say that, excuse me, <coughs> see, I'm the one coughing now. <laughs> I took it from you. Sorry. <laughs> sex is a very important thing. I think everybody, nearly everybody agrees that sex is something that's really important. But the problem that I have with sex work, and that's a term actually that I don't consider legitimate. People, other people want to use it. That's fine. Uh, but I don't think that sex work exists any more than friend work exists. Sex is more than just a biological process or an activity between people. When sex is reduced to hedonistic in its meaning that sex is an activity that one engages in for pleasure, that does lead to bad things in society. It leads to further degrading sexual acts. Like when we look at popular forms of pornography on the internet based in violence, degradation, uh, scatological urine, feces, uh, rape play, that the human brain uh, is rewired by seeing this kind of stuff. And this isn't just stuff on the margins either. Uh, to look at what sex work does, if it takes sex and drains it of its meaning to make it hedonistic, we also lose the principles that we need to show that other depraved or disordered forms of sexuality are wrong or bad. Um, I like, Destiny, what you said about video games. But if I had to make a video game analogy, I think most video games are actually good or neutral. There's a few outliers, like let's say the Call of Duty, if you, back in 2009, there was the level No Russian where you could go around and you could shoot innocent people at an airport. And that was very controversial. And most video games are not like that. But if video games were like porn, some of the most popular games that people search for would have degrading acts of violence in it towards you know, just innocent people, not <laughs> zombies. And I think people would see that that's very bad for the human person to degrade themselves in that way. So I am concerned that pornography and prostitution uh, degrade sex from having a very important meaning and expression of love between pers persons and leads to an exploitation and problems in society if it's just a hedonistic view. That's our, that's my view. Open All right, good debate, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's important that we to define that, obviously, like we said, the term sex work is pretty right. broad here. I would say, I define it into pornography and prostitution with a gray area, obviously, in between. It's kind of hard to determine. Mm -hmm. But mostly, this just involves monetizing the arousal of other people, sure. or the sexual arousal of other people. So there, you have to be making money, and your intention is to sexually arouse other people, or bring them to climax, you know, obviously if you're engaged in a sex act. Gotcha. Before we, real quick, before we dive into this, um, I think there's two really different ways this conversation would go, we can do both. I think we should decide first, do we want to talk about sex work through the lens of the teleology of what we think sex ought to be for, or do we want to talk about like the impacts on society first? I think both should be Yeah, but I think because the they're both very, very different arguments. Yeah. So. Do we want to focus on the first one of like what sex ought to be or? I think we can talk about that because I think the big thing that's dividing us is that it is mm -hmm. bad to mm -hmm. misuse sex. Sex is a very important thing. Okay. And so if one mm -hmm. misuses it, this will tend to lead to all kinds of social problems. There's natural sure. consequences to the misuse or the abuse of mm -hmm. sex. And you can live in an unreality and sort of mitigate those natural consequences, mm -hmm. um, but it only goes so far and there yeah. are going to be casualties and So like a question I have is you guys are saying like porn, like is, it's been so bad for society. What are mm. some of these outcomes you've seen since like the late 90s, early 2000s when the internet, you know, became a thing and you guys are saying 
porn is now making society worse when in a lot of ways it seems like since the late two, late 1990s and early 2000s we have less cases of SA, less child abuse, abortion rates are down like 41%. I'm not saying this is because of porn, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like porn has turned everyone into these violent that there people are having less sex, we have less teen pregnancies all of that stuff so what I, well I, I dispute the claim that the sexual assault can we say that or we just say say that's fine yeah okay that's fine. I dispute the claim that sexual that porn leads directly to a reduction in sexual assault and we have to be careful to not do um, after therefore because of mm -hmm. yeah. um, that porn becomes more prevalent what happens after that if you look at statistics of sexual assault they have been declining since the 1990s but since 2012 they have dramatically increased. Anyone who's watching this, just Google uh, rape United States 1990 to 2022, or rape UK, sorry, grape, uh, UK uh, from, 2000, so from 2002 to 2022. And you see a dramatic rise, like in the UK, it's like from, goes from 60,000 reported cases to 130,000 reported cases from 2012 to 2017. What's driving that? Mm -hmm. Wait, well, can I ask real quick, actually, because I just looked these up and I noticed that what you said <laughs> is exactly right. From 1992, they fall until right. 2012, and then they spike. They spike. What happened in 2013? Wasn't 2013 the start of the Me Too movement? Me Too movement started in 2017 with Alyssa Was it Milano. 2017? Well, yeah, okay, Alyssa Milano broke 20, it. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. I, I, I thought about that too, that that might be. Now, I so, think that yeah. when we talk about what causes things to happen in society, it's rarely ever one thing. Yeah, yeah. Because people are complex. So, like, why? Also, there's a difficulty in assessing how many rapes occur. Like, it's not as hard to figure out how many murders occur because mm -hmm. you just count the dead bodies or how many cars are stolen you count the cars yeah. that are taken but rape <laughs> many rapes are not prosecuted or they're not reported yeah. or but so, i think the number of allegations yeah. i do want to hear lila your, your thoughts mm -hmm. on that we see it going up but i think that one element that would make sense to see that drive from the 2010s is that online pornography had a huge boost during this time period that we have Pornhub was started in 2007 and it explodes going through 2012, 2015 on. And if you're wondering, like, the things that I'm concerned about, you look at, like, Pornhub from 2012 to, like, 2020, what are the most popular terms being searched? Most popular terms are teen, mm -hmm. mom, stepmom. This is not just, like, your vanilla pornography people are looking for. Though I find it suspicious that Pornhub isn't re reporting yeah. the teen search anymore. Uh, so I, I think that that could be a part in there of that further degradation of sexuality during that time period. I think that's a, a very significant point that you just raised about Pornhub and the most popular search terms. The reality is child sexual assault material has proliferated in recent years with the rise of more internet uh, spread of pornography and the ease of use of the spread of pornography. Um, pornography that is violent is increasing. Pornography, pornography that involves um, minors is increasing. Uh, so there's that world of that, you know, people involved and that usually those that have, a, you know, you can use the word addiction or compulsion around pornography. There's a need for it to be increasingly intense or violent or disordered in the sexual acts that are being portrayed for them to find it fulfilling. And so they have to continue on this like porn use um, journey that they're on. And it leads to many other victims left in the wake of it, like children. But another side of it, too, is the relational side for people that are trying to make families because I think civilization is built on families. Families is where what we're born into. It's where we find our greatest meaning and worth, um, how we're formed as kids, you know, how we become good citizens one day and how we discover love for the first time. And today, you know, around 20% of couples report that they experience conflict because of porn use of one of the partners. Like this is a significant thing afflicting a lot of relationships. And um, one of the top rated things in divorce, um, settlements are the porn use of one of the partners. So it's really yeah. damaging. And I think the life experience of many people, I'm sure are listening to this podcast right now, they know people, everyone knows <laughs> someone who's been hurt by pornography. So it's, yeah. it's really um, yeah, I pernicious. Don't, I don't think the pleasure of orgasm balances out the, the cons. So the data, I'm sure you guys, when you were looking at porn, it's very mixed. 
big medical consensus is that like this addiction and all that's not a thing when it comes to couples it seems like when the couples are on the same page that it doesn't lead to negative impacts it leads to that when there's one couple what do you mean by on the same page like when both like if uh like in a in a couple if they don't care if the other person watches porn which is a lot of couples then it doesn't seem to have these kind of do you you think that's the majority I think it's a lot of people. Do you think the majority of couples, the the wife or the girlfriend doesn't mind? It's really hard to tell. The majority of people I know, it's like that. Maybe the majority of people he knows and the majority of people you know, it's the opposite. So I don't know. I do think in general, people don't see viewing pornography as like cheating. Do, do, do you think terrible. the majority of people think that cheating is wrong though or even asking can i have cheating is wrong because it violates your boundaries but if that's not violating your boundaries which it's not for a lot Mm -hmm. of people then it doesn't seem to be having these negative that that same do you think a majority of wives would think that it's wrong for a husband to even ask if he should be allowed to cheat that's not cheating is about violating boundaries but if he asks is it okay if i watch porn when we're not together a lot of wives girlfriends would say yes but do you think a lot of the girl, wives and girlfriends saying yes are saying yes because they're really chill about it? It's not a big deal. We don't care. Yeah. Or they're saying yes because society is telling them you should say what yes. What I was saying that. about the boundaries is, is it okay for a husband to ask, hey, can we renegotiate these boundaries? Yeah, of course. It's, okay. it's always so, okay. So there's nothing wrong with a husband saying, hey, because I think many people, that would, would wives, girlfriends, lots of you would say, no, that's wrong that you would even ask. That's that's just not okay to do. You don't ask for something like that. Some people, and I think for some people, that's not the case. I don't I, know exactly percentages, but the majority, mm-hmm. like exactly, if I'm talking about like people I know, this is all I have, anecdotal evidence, unless there's some study done on this, is a lot of people like don't care. So I think there's a bit of a myth of this idea that, well, if my boundary is that it's okay to share you sexually with someone else, even though we're in a supposedly committed relationship. I think there's a mythology that as long as there's consent between the two adults, then it's okay for one or both to cheat as long as they know and they're okay. But you're using the word cheat when we're not talking about cheat. I'm saying not have sexual fidelity. So have sexual experiences, relationships with other people, whether that's through a screen or in life, in, in real life. And you know, there are studies that show um, you know, I have one right here that shows that married people who more frequently view porn, even if it's together, even if it's like we're consenting, this is a thing we're doing together, are more likely to experience marital dissatisfaction down the line than couples that do not look at porn together. So pornography yeah. has a pernicious effect even on consenting couples who are saying we're doing this together. Yeah. It's so great. And that was that was a longitudinal study based on the social science survey with 2,000 people. It's not just like a correlative effect. Yeah. So even if even if in our minds we rationalize and we live in the unreality of this is not affecting me, I can have this open marriage or I can have this open relationship and my partner can look at porn or have another sexual relationship, it still affects you in the real world and it still affects your long-term potential for happiness and fidelity, not just fidelity, but happiness and um, fulfillment in the relationship. And so you can, we can tell ourselves a theory or a myth of like, hey, it's going to be okay. I'm cool with this. But in reality, it doesn't work that way in the long run. But see, like with a lot of this, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are really frustrated looking up this stuff too, because so mm-hmm. many studies conflict when it comes to porn and viewing. And it's like women who view, view pornography report higher sexual satisfaction when they view it with a partner. In fact, the data on women, a well, lot of why it would is- that be, Jasmine? Because, why would that be? What do you mean, why would that be? Well, you just said women report higher satisfaction if the porn is being viewed with a partner because at least they feel like I'm not being 100% cheated on in this moment. No, I don't think that's it. I think you're just putting your framework on everybody else. Like, I'm a woman too. Mm-hmm. I don't care if my partner watches porn. It's not just me trying well, to satisfy him. It's not just me being like... And I think a lot of people, you have to separate being like being with another partner physically versus porn because I think the numbers there would be vastly different on who's okay if their partner when they're not around is watching porn versus who's okay with them sleeping with another person in real life I think you're going to get widely different opinions there from girlfriends wives women on whether that's okay or not I I would say when we look at the studies like for example in 2023 Angle Camp et al published a study in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy and it did a quantitative analysis and the most common themes among couples where the man views pornography is that the woman is glad that he told him that he talked about it openly uh but disapproves or is allowing the husband to look at pornography but does not want to hear about it so i think you would say that only a minority of women are positively in favor of this it's either negative or ambivalent well and i think the point is the the longitudinal study you mentioned and i mentioned is that even those that say they're in favor of it and are like watching it as a couple have worse outcomes down the line. 
And I think that's part of the, you know, the point here is that even if you, you know, like you're, you're in a very unique situation, you're making your living doing this thing, right? And so in your mind, of course it's gonna be great. I know you're gonna defend it and say it's gonna be great, but the reality is even people that are defending it or saying it's fine in my marriage, down the line don't have yeah. the best outcome. Yeah, well, you also, to be fair too, real quick, because you talked about based on a career, you guys are both ideologically, yeah, you could never that. change your position on this. That's completely regardless. not true. Of course Aren't you, you both so religious? all the studies but, show that it's I, good for I, you, would you I say I chose okay? to be Catholic, and I can choose to reject my faith. Too. Sure, but if like the research... No one's I mean, forcing could also, me to be Catholic. Yeah, but that she could also change her said. career yeah, too, right? Yeah, I could My point is that even if all the data shows... we can just one at a time. We can change our mind on empirical questions about whether a majority of people feel satisfaction in something. You can't use a, a a social science survey to determine whether something is moral or immoral. Yeah, sure. I was only pushing outcomes. back on the claim that like because it's her job, she has to defend well, it. Because I was I could more just speaking to outcomes though, because what I'm trying to explain here is not uh, my point here is that you can say and one can say I'm comfortable with this, I'm fine with this, it's okay in my marriage or my relationship. But my point is the social data shows that people who are comfortable with open relationships or pornography in their relationship have worse outcomes down the line. Well, the people well, have the worst, sorry, who have the worst outcomes when it comes to viewing pornography are people who have moral incongruence with it. That's what all, there's been a huge meta-analysis where they looked at the number one determinant or the number one predictor of having bad experiences with porn or quote unquote porn mm -hmm. addiction, which the medical consensus is it's not a thing, is moral incongruence and being religious is one of the biggest predictors of that. So I agree, porn is really bad for Catholics. I just don't agree that it's bad for everybody. But my point here is that even people who find a way to morally rationalize but, the but use that of kind, pornography yeah. or whatever it is, down the line at large outcomes are worse for open marriages. But those, or that kind of argument is like saying, them. well, gambling addiction isn't really real because the people who are most upset about gambling are only the people who are upset about losing money. The people who don't care about losing money, well, they're not really that psychologically disturbed about gambling a lot. But maybe they should be worried about that, just like people should be worried about what porn right. is doing to them when it desensitizes their brain and it makes them think that I need more and more hits and more and more disturbing pornography to get off. But the difference is that with, um, and that's why the DSM-5 accepts gambling. They've said multiple times, they've rejected porn multiple times because you can't make a link to how much people they view. They include hypersexuality under impulse control Not disorder. in the DSM-5, that's it's, in the World uh, Health Organization. They the, have, yeah, the, it's a compulsion, but not an addiction. But is a compulsion a good thing. Jasmine. Well, is hypersexuality is a compulsion to masturbate, or is it a compulsion to have sexual experiences? It's I like mean, umbrella. either way, is a compulsion that you are at the mercy of, and that often brings a and lot it's of a harm very and small suffering. Percentage. No, but I don't is see. I don't goal? see the difference there. That if you can be in a situation where, I, I think gambling and porn, they're very similar in their compulsivity. That there are lots of people who can gamble. I gamble, and I didn't lose the house. Lots of people can gamble, but there's a subset when they gamble. It turns their brain on too much and they need to get more and more highs from it So they gamble more and more and more and just even seeing the slot machine It does something to their brain and they're in a situation where I don't want to be gambling I feel bad. I don't want to be doing this, but they just can't stop similar thing with porn There's lots of people who watch porn and they don't turn into maniacs or anything like that But there's a subset where it lights up their brains and they know I don't want to be doing this I know it's just killing my marriage my wife feels awful knowing that I go and look at this stuff. I feel bad, but I can't stop. Don't those seem but like similar levels of compulsion? It, it may seem that way, but the scientific consensus, right? The DSM-5 statement is that other excessive behavioral patterns such as internet gaming have also been described, but the research on these and other behavioral syndromes is less cre clear. They, yep. they make it akin to exercise addiction, shopping addiction, and sex addiction. The data is just not there the point is that it affects you the way gambling does. That's not me saying it. That's what the scientific Yeah, but the, the DSM-5 is not an infallible Bible for everyone. You okay. have other studies, for example, love Love et al. published a series, uh, a study on the Neuroscientific Foundation of Pornography Addiction, and that was a 2015 article and they a, a, a meta-analysis, and they do link it to other addictions and other compulsions. And so I, I think if people just look at it, you just take a, a bird's eye view. The person who feels bad gambling and can't stop, the person who feels bad shopping and can't stop, and the person who looks at porn or sees prostitutes and feels bad and can't stop. It all seems pretty but similar to me. But the difference is that with porn, they've done multiple studies where it's like somebody who has positive attitudes toward it versus someone who has negative attitudes toward it. They're watching the same amount and they're having the same. You, they That's haven't a short been able term. Those are short term studies, though. But it's, it's so the, what all but, the but data But the point shows. is you can tell yourself again, you can live in unreality and tell yourself 
you know, this sexual act of infidelity, I know you don't call it infidelity because someone consented to it, but me going and, you know, being polyamorous or me going and having multiple sexual experiences outside of my well, marriage or my relationship or me going and looking at pornography or using pornography, you can tell yourself and experience short-term pleasure. You absolutely No, I think can. a lot of wives would, so say, that, not, would say that if, the, if their husband is chatting with you on a live cam, they would say that's cheating. Yes. You think a lot of wives well, yeah. would feel that way? Uh, you I don't agree. know how many wives find me for their husbands. Only. Also, wait, hold yeah. on. Yeah, when we when we talk about like cheating or so, but, murder, but, when, we, when we talk about like murder, murder is clearly unjustified killing, right? Where do we talk about murder? I'm just saying that the word murder means that's just an unjustified killing. It's baked into the, we, there, there's no such thing as a justified murder. When right. you use the word cheating, then you're begging the question. Of course, it's wrong. Yeah. But the question is whether or not these behaviors can be engaged in like consensual ways. My, right? well, so to say that like, my, oh, yeah. well, so that takes us back to what is sex for that might maybe that's fine. Yeah, we can my, go back. My, wait, my wait, 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 hold on, wait. Yeah. I'm just yeah. go right say, ahead. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm just saying that you can't just keep calling it cheating over and over and over again because you're begging the question. You're loading in with the word cheating is baked into this idea that a, vi that a boundary is being violated or that a non-consensual activity is happening. And that might be your position and that might be your opinion, but you can't have that perspective on two other people's boundaries. If they say, well, in our relationship, we're allowed to watch porn, it, it's inappropriate well, for you to call that cheating a different point in response to Jasmine. Well, no, no, hold position. on. I'm just being clear because Jasmine countered, contradicted that point mm -hmm. and then you tried to explain why. Well, actually, it is always infidelity when infidelity, again, has baked into it uh, that you're tautologically trying to define yeah, away the you, argument, which is whether or not you can engage in these behaviors in a healthy way. And you're saying, well, obviously, you can't because it's infidelity. It's like, well, you're begging the question. So if you, we're going to talk about the behaviors themselves, we can, but you can't call them all cheating infidelity. You can define the terms right? as you please. I think my point here with Jasmine... Well, hold on. Wait, what I'm not defining it as yeah. I please. We all agree that that's what those words mean. Every single person watching. Infidelity and cheating mm -hmm. means that you are doing something in contrast to what your partner wants. We all agree with that. And we all agree well, that those are bad. specific to sexual behavior Sure, but, of but everybody here agrees partner. that infidelity and cheating is bad, right? Yeah. Okay, so we all agree with that. So then, what, so then why say, like, well, this is cheating? We all agree that it's bad. I mean, it's whether or not it is cheating, I mean, we can agree to disagree right? on the point that, yes, I think it is infidelity well, or cheating so you think that to have like sex outside of Two your people are in a relationship marriage, and, and they that say that, hey, it's okay if we watch porn. You think they're still cheating on each other? I think that is being unfaithful to each other, yes. Okay. So she has a different view on it. Yeah, I understand. She has a different definition, I guess. And we can agree to disagree on that at this point. But my larger point that I was trying to make with you, Jasmine, or you know, kind of get to the bottom of was, yes, you can say I'm feeling great about this. I just had an orgasm. It feels great. I'm so happy with this, you know, pornogra pornography I just consumed or this, you know, webcam person I just spoke with or whatever or had this, you know, relationship with or whatever it is. Um, but in the long term, these things don't serve the person or society. So we can we can actually agree with you that hedonism feels good in the moment. Like I don't think That's... Trent would even disagree, at least for the person right. taking part in the hedonism. They might feel sick deep in their conscience. But I think in the moment, physically, they're going to feel good. And that's the temptation of hedonism, right? It's like, it feels good. Of course, I'm going to do it. But that's not true. I mean, women who view pornography report higher sexual satisfaction, improved communication about sex with and their partner, how is greater the comfort how is the with long -term their own sexual, well, greater comfort with their own sexual orientation, more frequent and higher is quality that a, sex, is that a, easier is time that a long term orgasm. study following There's their multiple life. studies. Almost and all the data on women in pornography in the old days, it used to give them negative body image issues. But since like people like me, you know what, you're welcome, or like more amateur mm -hmm. porn started coming out actually women report see feeling better about their bodies there's a huge study about women feeling much better about their vulvas now because they're seeing different types of vulvas represented in so porn. you think pornographic accounts online like and, and there's a lot of instagram accounts for example that are kind of some soft core pornography are making women at large and young girls at large feel good about their bodies pornography there's studies about pornography and women who view pornography because a lot of women watch like amateur porn more so than the mainstream studio porn now and you're seeing all different kinds of body types so that study that was done on women who now feel like oh i actually feel better about my vulva i feel better about my body when we compare that to women who viewed porn in the past but when studio porn was the only kind of porn out we're seeing a big difference yeah i mean, at, I mean at, at large sexual who, objectification of women online who, and of who is the majority? Certain, who views porn more, men body or women? Parts has been detrimental to young girls. Men health. view porn more, but women also do view it. Sure, like, I, pretty, pretty I don't. Frequently. I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. But I think we we just still need to go back to just the idea of our my argument. I think would be our argument that why pornography and prostitution is bad for society is that it encourages this false view about what sex is for that leads to all of these kinds of bad consequences. Well, what are sure. the bad wait, wait, consequences? Also, wait, real quick, can I run through something? So I'm taking notes on something, okay. Okay, so real quick, on just like a, from top to bottom. So- Well, um, why don't we go back and forth? Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, I just want a chance to go back and forth on something. So I heard a lot of points from Red, but I haven't been able to jump in on a lot of these. Um, <laughs> on the first one, so in 2013, 
the FBI redefined rape to include all forms of penetration on somebody, including like digital penetration. So that largely explains like the huge gap in, in numbers there. I don't know if you were trying to imply that in 2013 there was a spike that happened due to pornography or due to some other reason. I'm saying it. Can, the, I'm saying that's certainly plausible. It's a part of it, and I don't. And you don't have enough evidence to say that that explains all of the increase. No, but there was a massive redefinition. It also wouldn't explain the increase at the same time in England. And you. Have I don't no know about the increase in porn. England. Well, I, well, I don't know about the increase in England, but I feel like if the numbers dramatically jumped in 2013, it's strange that you didn't search for the answer for why they jumped and just assumed because it fits the there's, narrative of it must be pornography or whatever when a redefining of when a redefining of rape would be a really big reason why the numbers might change for instance if you're familiar with sweden's uh sexual assault uh statistics relating to immigration and everything like the swedish redefinition of a lot of these crimes is a reason why some of these numbers jump so i think anytime you see a huge jump of the data i think if you're inquisitive you'll usually ask like oh well i wonder why the data one of the changed yeah but, yeah. but Destiny, one of the there's also been meta-analysis of porn consumption that shows that uh, many studies that show the link between porn use and keep in mind a lot of porn today some studies say 88 percent of porn today involves violence or aggressive acts i don't and believe there's that a, there's women a link are more likely wait, wait, when you say violence between, or aggressive acts what does that mean um it involves you know i mean at, at the extreme simulation of no no sexual you said 88 percent. i watch a lot of porn i don't know no. how much porn is violent or aggressive i'm just curious what counts as an aggressive act 88 um, percent of uh, porn is aggressive forceful acts? causing uh pain or or discomfort to the um, person that's be, uh, being involved in well, the sexual act. Yeah. So that's one that was a, um, that but, was a 2010 study. Another one but, that was published by Vera Gray, 2021, in the British Journal of Criminology, said that it put it at one in eight had acts of violence that would be considered violence, like under, you know, things sure. like uh, like uh, bi for example, binding four limbs and penetration, gagging. Sure. So BDSS. I could buy, I could buy the, but, the but, one in eight. But the one in eight. My first point, women are the ones that are disproportionately actually seeking that stuff out. So is that also well, just to police people? They're also disproportionately. But, but, but I, I would that. say. I, wait, I wait, mean, hold on, just a sec. Yeah, Destiny, yeah. you wanted to go, and then yeah. Lila. Yeah, yeah. Have your yeah I just wanted to go ahead, Destiny. So I could believe the one in eight number, the eighty-eight percent. There's no chance that that's true. That's not of all pornography. It's of the three hundred most common. Sure. I'm just saying 88% of all pornography being violent, unless you're defining like oral sex as violent, there's no shot that the number is that high. That's just... It's, no, it's I, of, you, of the most popular. You know and that's, I, why on, that's why on Pornhub, you're having teens and then you're having, you know, step, you know, step parents involved or step mom involved. I, I, I think, uh, I think, I think urinating, urinating and ejaculating on somebody's face. I think that's violent and degrading. I understand what you're saying, but to the vast majority of normal human beings, urinating on somebody's face is far different than ejaculating on somebody's face. Maybe in the Catholic world, that's, those are similar things, but in the ordinary world, those are two completely and totally separate acts. I think most, I think most people in the regular world who don't, would consider that utterly degrading. Those, I'm saying those two things are different. If you want to classify both of them as degrading, that's well, why, fine. Why are they different? Because I don't know how much in the detail, but <laughs> urinating on somebody's face, the kink of water sports, is considered to be generally more extreme. There's far fewer people that are into it, and you're involving non-sexual fluids now in like a sexual sense. That's just considered a more hardcore type of... Why? If anything, urine is probably a more sterile liquid. And just because fewer people do it doesn't mean it's more extreme. I'm sure there's fewer people who do like Star Trek cosplay porn, but that doesn't mean it's more extreme than others just because it's a minority. I think that's just your It's just probably having, considered just more extreme. Here. It's not an intuition. It's because generally the further you get away from things that are... Uh, less directly involved with sex and then like the more uncomfortable those things tend to make people the more we would classify those things as being kind of like extreme I think it's like a bro I mean I don't know if I'm sure we could have a huge debate on like is this is bukkake porn considered extreme or is it just like a hardcore kink or, I, 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 we can get into them I'm just saying in general if you look at the number of people into a kink like water sports uh, or you mentioned like scatology like stuff like that versus water sports you're, like, ta you're talking about <laughs> Is that just <laughs> urinating on others, or is it other other urinating on people? Yeah, or any I think anything involving people. I'm not sure. I don't. Okay. Maybe Brian can fill us in more on. Because I like because that yeah, that's just euphemism. I enjoy water sports. I don't enjoy that. Well, so. that's what it's called. No, right. I don't care. You know, I mean, people can come up with all this sort this sort of stuff to smooth over. You know, it, what is hold actually on. No going one's trying on. to. I'm just trying to give an accurate accounting of what of, of how you refer to these things. If you're looking them up right. or, or trying to find go ahead. Out. Did you want to ask anything else? Um, I have yeah, a, I, have a I, question I as reject well. this idea of like, well, as pornography increases, uh, child sex material increases. Therefore, that's a fact, though. That's Destiny. fine. That it's a fact. But what I notice is oftentimes with porn, to try to refute like the central point, people will point to a negative outcome that might be increasing and pretend that that counts as a refutation of the single point. A statement that I that's can make- That's not what we did though, Destiny. That's exactly what you're doing. No. 
You're saying that as it's pornography not. increases, child sex, sexual material might increase, which means it's an attack against pornography. But I would say is it's, it's I, a form of pornography. Let me finish my statement. What I would say mm -hmm. it is a form of pornography. Literally, the increase of anything involving, say, children playing video games necessarily increases the exposure of them to people looking to abuse children. That doesn't necessarily mean that online video games or children playing online video games are bad. It just means you have to control for the negative outcome of people abusing people playing online video games. Same thing with pornography. It's not an argument against pornography if some people might abuse it in a way. There might be some people that actually record actual sexual assault. That's not an argument against pornography. It's an argument against people doing that bad thing. It is an argument of the most commonly searched for terms are things like teen, barely legal, and they're constantly searched over and over as the most popular thing, which people aren't doing with like video so, games. Okay. I mean, like here's the, the here's hard, the, here's something, the, well, if but something, here's the theory that I, that I think that the social data proves very clearly. And the th this is the, this is the point that when we disorder sex, when we divorce sex from love, fidelity, commitment, family, you know, like the, the whole project of marriage, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, sex can bring life into the world. If we do bring a life into the world, we're gonna stick together, love each other, build a family together. When you take sex out of that context, out of the context of love and marriage, and you put in the context of my, my goal, my orgasm, what I want, right? Um, at whatever cost I can pay, provided someone else consents, right? It's not just, I think, that person that will suffer and the other people engaged directly in that, that will suffer, but it is children. And so you said, well, yes, okay, there's a proliferation of child sexual assault material, yeah, yeah, but that's not saying porn is responsible for that. That is a form of the porn that's being created and consumed at large in our society. So to say that children are somehow unscathed by the proliferation of porn, I think is co totally untrue, Destiny. That's fine, and but in to addition, say that it, okay. And in addition, I'll just say one other thing, the flip side of this, we've debated on this before, Trent has as well. Um, sexual uh, hedonism at large, in addition, leads to what we have today, which is abortion on demand. You mentioned abortion rates are so low. They're actually very high. There are nearly a million a I year they're lower in this since country. When porn, with the, with the wide um, like availability of porn, it's gone down a lot. So but I'm just the internet you has, guys are saying, but, but oh my gosh, there's in, all this violent stuff now. Jasmine, I'm looking you know, at the data. Jasmine. There's nothing linking porn Jasmine, to increased there's more, violence. Is there actually a lot of studies <laughs> that link the wide availability of pornography to less Jasmine, violence? Jasmine, there's more pornography right here. today. We, we found that in the but Czech Jasmine, Republic, in Jasmine, Denmark, Three or four Japan, decades ago, China, it was find a Playboy magazine or go to an adult video store. Uh, these today, are some, today, porn is everywhere. So why are we so, not seeing this proliferation of violence and all these terrible we, uh, things happening? We're seeing no, a lot we're not. of... Those are all we're less seeing a lot than they of were social before. Ills. When there were just those Playboy magazines, that, we had way more of that stuff than we do now with pornography so you're widely saying available. We had, so is your argument that we had less child sexual assault material? Child abuse has declined. So are you, saying, the, are you saying that child sexual assault material can be created without child abuse? I'm saying that there, that, that like child abuse cases, all of those have gone down. I'm also saying that's that incorrect, STD Jasmine. rates have it's, gone, this is according to That's this. incorrect. So that's incorrect. is this incorrect? Okay, well, what, what yeah. data do you have that shows so that that's- your, your argument is that, that the proliferation of porn Somehow that has led to less child sexual abuse. I didn't say it's led to. I'm not saying causation. So what's here. your argument? My then? argument here is that if porn became widely available mm -hmm. and it's so violent and it's so terrible, then how come we're not seeing those outcomes? Why is there a proliferation of child sexual assault material on the internet and it increases because every year? Because we have doesn't. the internet now. We didn't have the internet before, but when we since we've had the internet, so you, we've had less. We've had less abortion, less syphilis, less gonorrhea, less teen sex, less teen birth rates have fallen 33 percent according to the CDC uh, essay has so, declined and then so there was your so your argument is that child sexual assault material is not porn or what is your argument my then? argument i'm not even talking about sexual assault child sexual assault material. what are you no, my argument here is that when porn became widely available we didn't see an increase in violence in fact i have lots of studies here that show that once porn became widely available like for instance in well, the Czech when, Republic, when, when did porn become widely available in the united states around the early 2000s that's what I read. So I, I think I, I think I can understand the argument you're making, but I don't think it bears out. For example, right. with divorce rates, as an example, as I said earlier, one of the the second highest, most quoted thing when it comes to divorce today is the pornography use of one of the partners. But divorce so, rates have also gone down since then. Uh, but early overall, 2000s. they've gone up over the last not well, since the 40, so. This 50 is my years. question. But, since uh, porn has so, become available, they have not gone <laughs> up. They've actually gone down I, I, since I, the early 2000s. One, re one reason so, they go down is people are I, choosing not to marry. That's the first fine. Place. But what I'm That's saying, true. and I don't think they're choosing not. To, I don't think they're not choosing to get married but, because but porn I, is available. But you have no link to that. My question is. But hold on. I think it's a fact. It is a fact 
that the sexual revolution, which took place in this country mid 20th century, which opened the floodgates of pornography, first with, you know, Playboy magazine, and then later on with the internet, which opened the floodgates to, you know, no fault divorce, more divorce, swinger culture, open marriages, all of this stuff, abortion, all of this stuff, that those all things, those evil, those social ills all mushroomed together. And so they then, still exist in large quantities in our society t today together. Because when you treat sex just as orgasm or as something that, as an adult, I'm entitled to as long as I consent and someone else is consenting, and sex has no other morality around it, you are opening the door, and we have the doors wide open to divorce, to abortion, to uh, a lot of the unhappiness that we're seeing in relationships So today. you said all the social data, data though, uh, agrees with you, but I'm pointing out that abortion rates have fallen 41% since the 90s. So but since abortion rates since porn has been entered into the mainstream yes, has, has gone, gone up over the last 50 years dramatically. But I, I, since, no, so, it became widely available in the late 90s, so the CDC uh, abortion rates have I, fallen 41% I don't think the data shows the what you're saying it's showing. It, people but, look it up. This is the CDC but, okay, that's saying this. But you don't think that porn is the only reason. I don't that. think that. But or, what my but question to you is, is, is yeah, that if it's such a terrible thing, where are these terrible outcomes? And because I'm trying to say that. I'm trying to say that porn, whether it was the Playboy porn or it's the vastly available the, internet porn. The terrible So you think they're the same? I think that they are part of the same problem, which is divorcing meaning from sex and welcoming, putting arms around hedonistic culture that breaks down families and breaks down marriages. And I'm saying that in the last 50 years in this country, we have seen unprecedented divorce, 50 unprecedented, years? unprecedented abortion. We've seen unprecedented STIs. The sexual revolutions okay. harm Are we at talking large. about think, the think, sexual okay, revolution think, or porn? Because I'm not talking about 50 years. I'm talking about since porn became widely available. You guys are saying and all these terrible things, teen mom porn, <laughs> so violent. Where are the outcomes that show that this is such a harm? Because I'm not seeing about, that. How I have three studies first, here. Actually, there's a lot of evidence that do, porn do has think, a cathartic effect. So do you on think it. it's bad, Jasmine, that the average first stage of exposure to pornography is 11 years old? I don't think that's ideal, but I don't do you, think and that's not asked. I said, is it bad? Yeah, I think it's bad, but I'm not seeing that it's so bad that it's leading to such terrible outcomes because what, it's not. What and where are these outcomes? What happens when children are expo when children are exposed to pornography? Actually, there's also a lot of conflicting data on that. A lot of the data on this is really frustrating because it's really conflicting. Is, is I it? have studies here well, that we're show living that it's in a, not. But really Jasmine, are, part of the reason for that is we're living in a social. Wait, wait hold hold on one second. I I want to. Is Go it ahead. bad when 11 year olds their first exposure to pornography? I'm just saying that's a bad thing. Yeah, it's a bad thing in the sense that why, it's not why is it Why is it bad? What does it do to them? I don't, it's like not, they're not old enough. Their, their prefrontal cortex isn't developed enough to be able to look at that and realize what's real, what's not real, how sex is supposed to go. So I don't think porn how, is a great how is, way. How is sex supposed to go? Probably not like the right, if you're on Pornhub watching like eight people gangbang someone, they're going to think that that is normal. That's sex. not normal? Not okay, like, wait, 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 hold on, wait. Okay, I think when we talk about how sex is supposed to go, okay, I think we have to build a constructive case for what are different ways that we can view sex. Um, you guys seem to be really happy to say that like sex ought to be this, or society's destroyed sex, or blah, 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 blah. I think that you can posit a separate argument that sex is actually something that the body is capable of experiencing that is a lot of fun, and we've evolved beyond the need to view sex as just a tool or a facility to pump out children, and instead can view it as a way to bond with people or have fun or enjoy recreationally. I think that we have the tools today to enjoy that because you've got things to protect or cure STDs. We've got ways to prevent pregnancies. Um, we've got different types of birth controls. I think that it's okay that society has taken on a different view of sex, just like we've taken on a different view of women working jobs or a different view of what kind of clothes can we wear because we have air conditioning or a different view of what are the hours that we can be awake where we can travel. I think it's just natural that different things will evolve over time Destiny. that we'll view different things. Yeah, we can view things differently uh, uh, based on our way of engaging with them. According to the Goebbaker Institute, for women that got abortions, 50% of them in the month that they got pregnant were using contraception. So when you kind of say, well, now we have these technologies that can somehow sort of blunt the, con the natural consequences of I'm sex. I'm sorry, wait, so what, was this, what was that supposed to refute? So what's that supposed to refute is you're saying that we have all of these powers now. To change the way we engage with sex, to yes. To change the way we engage was with sex. Was anything I said incorrect? Um, I, I think it's completely, it's wholly incorrect. Okay, to say do you that think that this, contraception reduces finish, the likelihood? Well, no, no, let's one stat at a let time. Let me finish. No, 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 hold on. I you're didn't even get to ask my question. I didn't even barely talk for two sentences and you wanted to cut me off with the thing about abortion. So I'm going to ask you, do you think contraception is effective at dramatically reducing the rates of, of 
getting impregnated. I think that at large, contraception has led to the mindset, a contraceptive mindset. I'm going to ask the same question again when you finish this. It, I, de I it depends. It over left. time, okay. it actually asking, increases. Okay. It actually leads to more abortion over okay. time. Do you think that contraception is effective at preventing pregnancies? It can in the short term, but over time, it leads to more abortion. Really? Do you have any evidence there's that somebody been, that is on... So you're, saying, so you're saying you have a study right now that shows that somebody on contraception, on average, has more children over their lifetime than somebody that doesn't use contraception. No, what I'm saying okay, is, so then you example, don't have any evidence for that. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't. You're, you, well, no, because you're giving, been, no, no, you're giving me a lot of let, like socially constructed opinions. You have no data no, for it based on your presumptions of how you think that sex should operate religiously. <laughs> but I reject those things. So obviously we, we, we know that we know that Destiny, contraception. Destiny, yeah, we, we are not that, making a case that sex ought to be done religiously or ought to be done in this particular way. We are just saying that the view that that prostitution and pornography require which is that sex is just a hedonistic activity. Nobody, why does it require that? Because I, it would be wrong if, it, okay, well, what, what, what would you, how would you answer the it question? It can have many purposes. I think that when I go to a massage parlor, I'm paying, you know, 80 bucks to get a massage. Right. That can just be a person giving a massage with a partner, having a partner rubbing your back or your neck, that can feel like a lot more romantic. So, just because I go to the massage parlor doesn't mean I devalue the experience <laughs> with like a partner, no? Or do you think it does? Earlier you used the phrase, sex work isn't real because sex for hire doesn't make sense. It's like a friend for hire. What is a therapist? Can't you pay a therapist to review your problems with them but and then they give you feedback? And they, they, but here, but here's friend. the thing. We, and once you stop paying a sex worker, they stop having sex with you. Yeah. But the whole, the whole that, point that's of That's why it's called work. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Because the point we, we is that don't it's more meaningful than that. Of course it is more meaningful. Yeah. I would agree. Just like having a really good intimate conversation Wait. with a friend is more meaningful than having an intimate conversation I'm so with a sorry. therapist. We've of course. around so many different yeah. places. Only because I'm following you and your tangents. Well, but well go ahead. I, I was trying to ask you, you made a. So if sex work is so if sex work is just a skill, mm -hmm. it's something that people enjoy. Yeah. Uh, do there have to be? Is this something that only? Specialists cannot. Well, let's say, for example, so Jasmine, a lot of people do only fans. They have other jobs. Like you're a lawyer, uh -huh. you have other jobs. So you can have someone who's a masseuse and does only fans, or a therapist and does only fans, yeah. right? Okay. So you could be you're like a sex worker by night, masseuse, therapist during the day. Would it be okay if they offered those sex services as a part of their day job? Being a masseuse, depends on what the day job is. If it's like a lawyer or something, or if it's like a therapist, probably not because you're <laughs> violating like um, a, an appropriate relationship to have with somebody. Um, but if it's like your auto mechanic and he also sells you like pictures of his dick, it's probably not as big of a let deal. Me, it would let me give you another example. So my sure. my wife was a nurse at the hospital, so she worked with um, neurotelemetry and people have you know brain injuries, spine injuries, stuff like that, mm -hmm. and also older people and people who would need things like bathing and cleaning. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they need, um, you know, to be clean, including clean their peritoneum, perineal care. So just like groin, crotch, butt, that kind of stuff. Sure. And some of them would ask her, and this would also happen to other nurses, hey, while you're down there, could you just like, you know, play, <coughs> play with my wee-wee a little bit or, you know, masturbate me? Okay. So let's say you have a nurse who is Aww. also an OnlyFans, uh, you know, is a sex worker on the side. Mm -hmm. Should she be allowed to offer that? Is that my understanding, and I'm not a medical professional, but my understanding is that when you're making decisions related to patient care, if a patient under your care, engaging in friendly or sexual relationships with them can cause an inappropriate crossing of boundaries that compromises your ability to deliver good medical care. So I would say that in the case you, where somebody's like a therapist or a medical professional that's making decisions relating to your health care, it's probably why? not because a problem. Why? Because you just related but, but therapy why? to friendship. Lawyers can't even and, accept and say Hold on, wait, how did my relationship therapy to friendship break? anything that I just said because you're saying that you can't enter this new dynamic of sexual relationship in a healthcare setting because that somehow violates the yeah, what's, setting. what's why? being violated that's trans question why what did I just say was being violated what is being violated I just said, I said it like three times I'll repeat it again it's compromising your ability to deliver care but is, if the care is included let me ask you this question is is so if the sex work, you wouldn't include sex work and health work together in care unless you're because <laughs> no, you, okay, yeah so in, well, unlike, in, I, I mean, we could we could invent a scenario that's true. What if you're going to a hospital and part of the care is my husband has issues with erectile dysfunction? Maybe part of the <laughs> health services is them jerking you off to make sure everything's working. In that case, you would combine it. Would you agree, or would you would you say no, that's still you, inappropriate? You're, wait, I want an answer for that. Would you? If that case, would that be an appropriate combination no, I don't of think like you should go to uh, people to uh, jerk you off? No, that's. Do you not think it would spouse. be? Do you think us, uh, ignoring your personal sexual views? Do you think it would it's be appropriate? It's not a personal sexual view. It's the view that's actually been because held sex, for thousands of years by many millions. So, and billions if, of so people if you're going to a hospital and they're trying to check you for a working sexual function, them seeing if you can get an erection, that would be an inappropriate way for them to examine you. I think if they are really trying to determine you can, if you're, if you can get an erection, there's a way, and you're a married. person person in a marriage there's what if a you're not a married person what if you're that? single why would they need to determine that 
Because believe it or not, there are the people in this situation? world that even when they're not married, they want to ensure that their sexual function is working. And sex is wait, no, wait. I really want to answer that. I really want to answer that. I don't. I. I. You disagree with that? You don't think your sexual function is relevant if you're not married? No, I think it's relevant, but I think that. It, I don't think it would be good care to go into a hospital There's, and say... There is okay, a... Okay, wait, I really want to answer this. So if you have problems <laughs> with erectile dysfunction, it would be inappropriate mm -hmm. for a healthcare provider to assess the ability of you to get an erection while you're at the hospital. That's inappropriate. I, I mean, I think it uh, it depends. I'm curious what the standard of care is for that right now. I mean, do you know what the standard of care is I'm right not, now? but yeah. I'm asking you as a hypothetical. But I'm asking yeah. if you go to the hospital, you have problems with erectile dysfunction. Doctor, I've got issues. And I, I say, do. okay, we're going to give you a medication. We're going to try something. And let's see, we'll see if we can I, get I an erection. I think it would be a strange form of care to say, well, let's try I didn't ask if it was stranger Let's, than as it was appropriate. I, think it would, I don't think it would be appropriate. No, you don't I think, think it would be appropriate. I think okay. giving a medication... I, so that type we, of, med no, that type of clear, healthcare is totally outlawed. We would agree. Clear, to be it's clear, fine. giving a medication would be appropriate. It's fine to use case, medical to, like, treatment. To stimulate them... It's fine to use medical treatment to see if your body is working properly. Mm -hmm. It's fine to do things to um, acquire semen, for example. You might use, for example, with some patients, use electroejaculation stimulation of the prostate in order Jesus. to get... Well, for some patients, that's what you have to do, including if they're paralyzed. Okay, I understand so, what you just said was a way more hardcore kink than water sports, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, it, no, to see if you can ejaculate, to see if you're able. It, there is a difference between trying to determine if your body is functioning properly mm -hmm. and saying that <laughs> sex is just a service that can be provided. Well, so, if, so hold on. If we, provide, so if we provide people in the hospital, we provide them all kinds of services to make sure they're comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Like we give them television they don't need that to live right okay but it makes them comfortable correct um yeah so we give patients stuff in the hospital to make sure that their stay is comfortable we give them television we give them different food they can choose we give them bathing obviously and when they're very uncomfortable we turn them we do things to make sure they're comfortable so if a patient says sex would make me very comfortable why wouldn't <laughs> if a nurse can clean the guy's testicles and penis and is already handling all of this why not just you put on the gloves and give them a, a hand job? Well, one is because it's illegal. Um, but what, two, if it were legal, my guess would be the procedure for that would be you would bring in a third party or you contract why? out to somebody. Why do you bring in a third party I've already to give the guy? Let, let, me, let me finish. Go. Let me yeah. finish. Why do you need to bring in a third party to give the guy a hand job <laughs> and not a third party to wipe his butt and clean between his peritoneum? Because when you start engaging in romantic or sexual or Well, well who says it's romantic? It's just it's, getting it's, I said it's, or, it's or means any of these. Yeah. When you engage in romantic or sexual or friendship type things, yeah. that these things are all inappropriate because they compromise your ability to objectively offer care. For instance, would it be inappropriate to say, well, can you please just like jerk me off? You're gonna clean my ass? Yes, that would be because if a patient starts to have a sexual relationship with a practitioner, then they're, then if that practitioner has to make a tough call on that patient's health, but that you, might be compromised. The same way that, let's say, the same way that, let's say the person starts saying like, man, you know, my but kids why, never- why does sex do this though? Wait, I, wait, let, me, wait just... let me just finish. Hold on, I gotta finish this one thing. Oh my God, okay. Let's say that the patient comes in or the, the nurse comes in and the patient starts talking to the nurse like, man, my kids aren't calling me like I don't know what to do and then the nurse sits around and they start talking blah 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 that would be equally inappropriate that would be well, incredibly inappropriate wait, if they started to, to, to form a very close friendship with the patient that would also be inappropriate because again if a tough call has to be made on the patient at some point you might not be able to make that tough call because now your judgment is compromised this is why uh, surgeons that have like wives or husbands don't operate on them because their judgment is compromised well, what if you can give hand jobs and you're not attached it's just sex work well, right now, in terms of how human relationships and everything work, it seems okay, to be so the case that- Okay, so you're saying something very important, okay. which is that there is an emotional, well, psychological go, component so to sex. As somebody, so as a lawyer, we have rules <laughs> on how we're able to engage though. with people. Hold we're on, not I allowed wanna, to accept I gifts, make sure, for instance. I want like to make sure I'm understanding Destiny correctly and what he just said. Hold on, let, okay. let Lila go, then um, we'll have okay. you come in. Go. And I do want to get back to the contraception thing, but, uh, but you had said- that there's an emotional, romantic connection to sex that's, I think you, I don't know if you Often Oftentimes the word. there can be, yes. Yes. So that sounds like more than work. It can be. Yeah, so, so you're taught, when you talk, when you guys talk about wait, sex work. Wait, no, hold work, on, I'm like sorry, wait, wait, I'm sorry, real quick, I reject that. What do you mean that sounds like more than work? When you talk about sex work, like we can sell this commodity of sex, like. It's a service. To lead, like it's a service. You're saying, well, but more emotions and psychological romantic feelings get involved. Therefore, it doesn't belong in the professional setting of healthcare. That's what you're because saying. Because it comes, but like. So how can you still say it's work and it's a professional, this do professional teachers job? work? Yes. Do they have emotional connections to children and parents? And they should. That's okay, a healthy thing. Okay, so then thing. that argument doesn't make any sense. So what's the next one? Well, are you saying that a nurse should not have an emotional connection at all to her patient? Generally, they try to minimize it, yes. Uh, they, they should have empathy. That's actually required for nurses to have empathy. You're telling they me they shouldn't have empathy. Are, are you, they should have compassion. They're two different things because empathy they, can compromise your sure, ability to deliver. Are you saying a nurse can't understand 
uh, I, the personal background, desires, hopes, and develop a friendly rapport with a patient. You I can have like a, a friendly where there isn't you one. Can, no, no, it's a key, it's a crucial distinction. Having a friendly rapport with somebody is different than becoming personally, emotionally invested in the outcome. You have to maintain an appropriate level of distance, whether you're a lawyer, right. yeah. whether and you're and a I medical agree. professional. Yeah. Sex crosses that line because of what sex just intrinsically. But many is. things cross that line. Like I just said, when you're a lawyer, you can't accept certain gifts. You can't get too close to your clients. They can't become like best friends to you. That's going to cause problems for you down the line. We take entire classes on this, on all the ways we're not supposed to get too close with our clients. And it's not all sexually. It's even just in friendship. Yeah. So professionalism, the standard for professionalism, I agree, it's not professional to offer sexual services to somebody in a, in a, in a setting where that's not appropriate. But there are other things that aren't appropriate either. It doesn't mean they're all bad and that you can't use okay. them yeah. in a different So I think, I mean, the, the point that you're making, though, is that sex is personal it involves rom it can involve romance it involves feelings it involves this connectivity that you sometimes can't help but have and that's our point well that's i have a, I have a question no, wait, 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 wait. that's not your point yeah. that that's is part every, of a very no, no. important part of that's our point has, no that's every single human's point we all understand that we, everyone here agrees that a therapist you understand that but you also think it's acceptable to have sec these sexual relationships with potentially thousands of people you're online missing, for, you're, for you're not understanding the whole point of your argument has to do with dual relationships and you're trying to apply this to singular relationships we all agree here that a therapist having sex with a patient would be bad right why because it impacts don't what do you mean what is, what? let's say the therapist is a well, sex a therapist therapist. should be no, a sex be, therapist is obviously not the type of therapist but why, hold on, hold on, no but that's the thing is sex client. therapist Wait, hold on. it's illegal for sex therapists to have sex with their own clients i don't they know. can talk to them I'm about not even, sex hold on i'm not even sure that's true hold on okay let me okay i can't ask a question because i'm not going to get any engagement you so may I'll just ask, make that's my point. not true Justin. i'm not it is a very simple question is can a therapist have sex with a patient and then you're like well what about sex therapy no 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 well, they I can, think they Jasmine cannot. considers what she does a form Correct, but of I'm and they can't because it therapy. compromises your ability to give good but therapy. But what I am saying <laughs> is that if sex yep. is just a service that is provided, I, and I, it I, has wait, this, I, we don't have to. I understand the next stage of your argument. I'm trying to show why that's ridiculous. I understand it. You're going to say, well, well, sex, then I will take it out of the dual role to the single role, and I'll give you. Wait, wait, a wait, 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 wait. Let's just explore this for two seconds, and we can go to whatever you're going to jump to. Okay, a therapist cannot have sex with a patient. Because it compromised their ability to deliver good therapy. Well, it we agree on that their relationship, right? And Stop. No, that's no. not the only reason. Oh my God! Go it ahead. It does. It would also be equally inappropriate for a therapist to form a close friendship with and to go out and like have yeah, drinks or meals with a patient. Not, the, the but it doesn't mean that drinks and dinner are no, super. It's not just that because special. when a the therapist has sex with a patient, destiny, it's great. Because the therapist has a power imbalance over the patient and can manipulate their emotions and there are consent issues involved. Sure, that's true as well. That's not what we're focusing on here. That's the more important here. reason. Okay, we can pick a different, we can pick a nurse and a, and but, a patient uh, but I think as well. I, I think it must be said that a well, lot of people involved in creating pornography and prostitution consider what they do a form of therapy for the client. That's, but that's but not at all There is a reason that the sexual <laughs> revolution has coincided with us being more cognizant of things like consent because the whole point of the sexual revolution and allowing people more freedom and how they want to express their sexuality is that it's a choice, but it's still your choice, right? That's okay. why things like marital rape was outlawed in the 90s. We have the rape shield doctrine. You're not allowed to bring up a victim's past sexual history in a sexual assault case. We have I the Me Too movement. So I don't think like, yeah, power imbalances are important because that can get in the way of consent so consent right. is super important but what right. you choose to do is not that's what the sexual it's not it's an accident that those okay. two things and me too is a reaction against the excesses of the sexual revolution so i mean i think to no, say that these so. things are given to us by the sexual revolution is okay. totally well let me totally let me it, right. it is though all right like so, marital rape no. the, the marital well, rape the early outlaws, feminists rape the early shield, feminists you're saying were, me too is a is a reaction to what a me too is the reaction to the excesses of the sexual revolution i don't think and, so and a lot of the uh, a lot of the reform that was requested in the way that marriages took place and marital rape protection was early feminists who are not sexual revolutionaries who themselves wanted family values and many of them were pro-life no so to say that it was the sexual revolutionaries that I'm gave saying us these that things those two correct. things coincided at the same time because the whole point of the sexual revolution was that okay you're not going to be ruined now because you choose to have casual sex but if someone comes in because there was a lot of inappropriate harassment rape etc statute of limitations has been increased due to the me too movement all of these things <laughs> coincided because consent is a huge part of the sexual revolution and i i i think that and me all, too was a response to people People seeing women as commodities that they can acquire and seeing sex as a means of of acquiring that commodity basically it's, it's responding to a dehumanizing view of sex now I agree 
Many people don't have that view, but I do think that the hedonistic view of sex does lead to that. But here's the question I wanted to ask, just to get back to what sex is for and why I think it shows that this view of sex is absurd. All right, suppose you had a friend and they said, because uh, this is parlaying an idea that sex is just a, it's a hedonistic activity people can share with consent. Like say, for example, like martial arts. So martial arts, if I go Nobody down Nobody thinks sex is like that. But no, no, hold on. Let me okay. say, make the, the analogy. Okay, if it. I start martial arts with somebody without their consent, I'll go to jail because that's assault, right? Uh -huh. If I just go out and punch somebody. But I can ask them, hey, do you want to spar with me a little bit? Okay. And then that's okay because we have consent and it's this kind of activity. Now, imagine that you, would it be healthy to have a friend who says, hey, um, I'm glad you and I are getting into martial arts together, um, but I really feel like we can only be friends if you only do martial arts with me, or we can only be friends if you only do tennis with me, or I want you to be my only friend. You're the only friend that I have. With those examples, would you say that those are disordered friendships? Probably, yeah. All right, so my next question would be, <laughs> is it disordered for someone to say, I want you to be the only person I have sex with, you're the only person who has sex with me? Do you think that's disordered? Not necessarily, no. What's the difference between activities that are pleasurable and consensual, martial arts, chess, tennis, spending time together, and sex then? What's, what is the difference between the two that one is disordered, it's a friendship you should not get in, and the other we would say not even that it's not disordered, but it's the way things ought to it be It might be sex. the love of your life what's, in a marriage. What's, what's the difference? <laughs> Uh, I, the difference is going to be the preference as, of the people that are partaking in these things. Some people might feel like uh, they like to do martial arts with a lot of people. And for sexual activity, I think people tend to prefer to be more exclusive with that. Um, there's probably other things we could think of. That is that, is that be, natural? Or should we think like that's the way they ought to treat sex? Whether or not, it's, <laughs> whether or not it's natural or not is a separate question. Well, it seems obvious that if someone says, I want you to be my only friend and you can't have other friends, we'd say that's a friendship you probably shouldn't get into, right? Generally, yeah. Then why but don't like, we, if we're going to use like why the natural... Don't, why don't we say the same thing then about, I want you to be the only person I have sex with? In fact, we say that's a good thing. So if we're talking Hold about on, wait, sex wait, because work, if a subscriber told to me, you're the only person I want you to, I'm the only person I want you to have, I would say no, that's not the context of this Yeah, because you're selling a business, business and you can't have one that, customer. Yes, but my point is that just because that's one way to see sex is like an intimate, monogamous thing, there are a lot of people who don't view it that way, who don't want to view it that way. And I'm wondering, back to my original question, where are these outcomes that are so <laughs> detrimental to society that's happening because some people... People. Uh, people that want to be polyamorous are not getting in the way well, of your monogamy. Well, you don't monogamy. think that 20% of couples expressing unhappiness because of porn, porn use in the, in the relationship is a problem? 20% of couples? Where is that? Yeah, this is, is a study out? from, um, and then also the statistic about uh, the amount of uh, people that are um, pornography use being uh, listed as one of the reasons for divorce. You don't think that that's meaningful? It could, and that there are many matters? things that are listed as divorce, but I have a bunch of studies here that show that since, like I just told you, porn, that porn actually can have a cathartic effect on violence. The STD rates come down. There's is a it, huge study that shows that bad? AIDS or, um, yeah, HIV <laughs> could go down by 30 to 40% if we were to just decriminalize prostitution. So there is evidence going both ways when it comes to porn and sex work, and I don't see anything that's super conclusive that this is just a terrible harm. Is more than That's something like alcohol That's a study like from the Wheatley Institute, be. by the way. About 20% of couples report a degree of conflict in their yeah, relationship due I, to pornography. Can, One in quick, four on men the, report hiding porn right. from their partner. On the, One yes. in four men. Awesome. Okay. Hiding it from their partner. Probably because they're looking and at that might, prostate electro stem porn, okay? But but the, I, I think the, the larger kind of the meta point here, and you were speaking to this earlier, Destiny, but then we kind of got, uh, you know, I, I, the conversation unraveled a bit. But you were saying about how we have all this technology. And so now we can do, now we can treat sex recreationally. Did I understand you correctly? I'm saying that it's allowed <laughs> us to change the way we view sex, yes. Okay, so, so my point is that even with the technology, yeah. the natural consequences and outcomes still find the way. Even if we can live in unreality for a short time with the technology. You know, I'm just on OnlyFans for a moment. It's not going to hurt my relationship. I'm going to use a condom here so I'm not going to get pregnant, whatever it is, right? Or I'm not going to get this girl pregnant, whatever it is. The consequences catch up. And when I brought up the Guttmacher Institute statistic, the reason it mattered is because half of the women who are getting abortions, according to the research arm of Planned Parenthood, the biggest abortion chain, report using contraception in the month that they got pregnant. So they were using it, they thought they were doing the safe safe sex thing, and then they get pregnant and they show up for the abortion. So my point That's, here is- I just, you keep bringing up the stat. Like, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if, for instance, but like 70% of people that die in car accidents are wearing seatbelts. 
That doesn't mean wearing a seatbelt is bad. It means that, like, if you're going to be in a car accident, you're probably in a car, you're probably wearing a seatbelt. If you're getting pregnant and you're having sex, you're probably drawing something from a But if getting into the car is promiscuous sex, maybe we should consider not getting into the car so much. Okay, I'm just saying that that number you're giving, when when that's saying, like, people were on birth control. If getting into the car is going and sleeping with the prostitute, if getting into the car is here's a question. sex culture, then maybe we should I just want to ask about your study. You brought up a study. I'm not familiar with this. You said that, what was that number that you quoted? You said which one? Fifty percent of people said they were using birth control or whatever, and they got yes. Okay. So Guttmacher Macker Institute. The types of okay in that study for birth control, did they include natural family planning and pull no. out method? No, this is a contraception, birth control pills, and condoms or barrier Hold methods. Hold on, well, pull out method and natural family plan are both considered forms of contraception. I mean, that's like a very small fraction of a percent of people who even use that, anyways. First of all, that's not true. That is especially true, especially among Christians. Natural <laughs> family planning is considered one of the only ethical ways to do contraception, which you know. No, this is large. Right? This is. At, this is largely birth control pills and barrier method condoms or diaphragms or otherwise. Okay, all right. I I'd, mean, I'd be curious if that's true, but like even so, it is th- true because we know there's a failure rate. There's there a failure a rate failu- even with sterilization. There is a failure, a failure rate, rate, but like perfect use failure rate is like one percent. Um, if real you're having a lot of could be, so why if is you're having regular less, promiscuous sex or regular it, sex even with one partner that you don't want to have a kid with eventually there's going to be you know for many there will be a failure for so many when you know hold on for many there won't be it's yeah. a one percent well, failure rate that's the opposite let's say of many it's almost a million abortions a year enough no, and by I, I, the way, million abortions are here, but and, 330 million and, and, people. And I don't by, know if that's enough. Well, Hold on. By the way, wait, 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 you're so other, easily. One, can I when say one other point? Many people Destiny, experience failure rates. That's not what one percent means. One percent is not many. One other point, because okay. I know that you think abortion typically is acceptable up to a certain point. There's over 10,000 abortions that happen after the marker where you think it's a human life. Okay. So is 10,000 abortions, 10,000 murders? You would consider it murder of children that are viable in this country a year. Mm-hmm. Is that worth the promiscuity of adults? 10,000 murders But you're linking that to, to sex work and promiscuity? I don't, yeah, I'm, I'm I don't connecting that. You just all said, of it. Oh, it's affecting 20. <laughs> alcohol is also like, I think 10% of divorces list like alcohol is the issue. Is alcohol bad now? I think alcoholism is bad. Alcoholism is bad, yeah. but alcohol, it doesn't have to be alcoholism. Do you think that's in, bad? In moderation. So porn, yeah. I agree. If you have well, a compulsive, and I think sex, but, but problematic definitely. porn use is bad, but is porn bad and is sex bad? That's the I question. I think sex what, is wait, wait, great. Wait, I think porn is bad. What is the dif- okay. Jasmine, what's yeah. the difference between porn use and problematic porn use? Problematic porn use is people personally identify that's the medical term with it being a problem in their lives which is a very small the biggest the only representative sample we is have it, puts it at like four percent is of it men. possible for someone to use porn in a bad way if they don't personally feel anything bad about it what do you mean what's can you give me an example of how using porn in a bad way in a husband context, uses really? a husband looks at porn talks to only fans girls masturbates to them <laughs> uh and his wife hates it but he doesn't think it's a big deal and it's really hurting their marriage. Yeah, and she just wants like live. if he drinks alcohol too much and she doesn't think and she doesn't like it, but he still does it. That's a bad. It's bad when people violate the boundaries. Now of their let me try another one. Then let's say, what if the wife says, "You talking to any woman on the face of the earth hurts me and makes me upset"? Would you say that that wife has an inappropriate boundary? No, because there's some. There's a lot of people that are like that, and they that, literally that, 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 that her husband cannot talk to any woman even like a female secretary she's so hyper jealous my family is from the middle east this is literally how they set up society do you think that's good i don't think that's good but if that, if there are people who okay. that's the way that they're happy i don't think that's good i think the way you guys live your life is great you guys don't think the way i live my life is great the point is that when we allow people to do what's conducive to their no, own but, happiness that's but what i'm asking you is that can a spouse have Ec- boundary expectations that are reasonable and unreasonable. I think if we're going to use like a reasonable person standard, yeah. that depends on like the community. Sure, yes. in certain communities, that's and in your community, porn is. Bad. I'm just in talking about the community. This even this community out here, mm-hmm. who is you know um, non-disclosed location, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, would be listening in on this. That an unreasonable boundary would be a girlfriend says my boyfriend can't talk to any other women, that that would be unreasonable. And a reasonable one would be, my boyfriend should not be going around looking at other naked women. That's fine, but still, like, you guys also think, like, masturbation in general. Yeah, you got, not your, what do you mean, what do you mean by you guys? Well, like, I've, I've watched your video, you said masturbation just in general is is wrong. I don't mm-hmm. think that our community standard would agree with you. I but, would but, agree that maybe I'm farther this way, but your definition
definitely nowhere near where the reasonable no, but, person. I think I'll bite the bullet. There are there are definitely boundaries that are like pathological that are not okay, and there are probably some that are okay. We but can we're probably not draw debating some whether that are okay our whether. sexual ethic is good or bad. We're debating whether your sexual ethic is bad. Okay. Yeah, and we're, yeah. I'm wondering where is sex work these, good? If the, the only topic. thing you have is that 20% mm -hmm. of uh, marriages have an issue with this, 20%. Uh, marriages have issues with substances and etc. Are those things bad? You said and alcoholism a, and is it's bad. A leading I think problematic divorce, porn Jasmine. use is also bad. You, you should go get help from that. Yes, and divorce rates have not gone up since the proliferation of porn. But, but the point is that porn is a is a prominent factor in divorce. So is substance abuse. So is alcohol. But you so would do say we... substance abuse is bad. So why are you saying porn is good? I think no, no, wait, wait. Because uh, substance abuse, <laughs> you're, you're, abuse. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying substance abuse is bad. Therefore, why isn't porn bad? No, that's but, not but what I said. That, hold in on. Context, that is literally what you but, just said. You said why would substance the, abuse be but bad? But in the context but of why people get divorced, Destiny is what we were speaking yes, to. Yes. No, no. But people don't get divorced because of substances. They get divorced because of behaviors substance abuse. abuse well and but, but you're saying they get divorced because of porn don't like. why not porn abuse yeah why's well, my question problematic porn it's, use. it's getting it's in the way of your abuse, life it's, it's bad but there are most of the people that consume porn which is the majority of people it's mm. not getting in the way of their because we, it's not getting in the way because of we we can I, delineate we can say <laughs> oh when you drink this much alcohol it makes you sleepy or giggly or fall down drunk or wrecks your liver. Like we can talk about the different effects at the different levels and what they do and whether it makes sense for a wife to tolerate or, or a spouse to tolerate or not tolerate. But when it comes to porn, I think it's very fair for a spouse to say, yeah, I'm not going to tolerate my spouse um, giving orgasm or giving that sexual desire to someone else. My biggest problem with the view you guys are defending is that you lose any principled basis to say things like infidelity or even other, you can't even define what extreme sexual behavior is as long as it's consensual. Well, hold on, wait, 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 wait. You can absolutely have all of these discussions. Just because you say, I think that my partner can watch porn, you're saying you can't have any more sexual boundaries if you grant that? Because I could explore your lives and find a million different things. Do you think your partner should be allowed to eat? Well, yeah, of course. Should they be allowed to have dinner with a member of the opposite sex alone at a restaurant? Maybe not. That, some and, people wouldn't be necessarily comfortable with that. And, just, because, just because you allow some things no. doesn't mean that you've eliminated every this, single no, thing in that bracket. No, this goes back to my previous argument in saying about what boundaries are reasonable or unreasonable. Yep. That but, if, but, sex, if sex is just another activity, yeah. like other activities, then it becomes unreasonable to demand exclusivity for it. Literally, but, nobody here is saying that sex is just another activity. Yeah. You seem, then, called it a recreational you seem activity. to have. Then, no, what no, no, is, then what is it? Let me, I, I, sure. There are some activities that can serve a variety of different purposes. Okay. For right. sex, it could be recreational or it could be an incredibly emotional, romantic, bond building thing. Yeah. Much the same that we could imagine, as I just brought up. Dinner could be whatever. I've been going out to dinner with a ton of people. Right. But it's whatever. But dinner can also be an incredibly romantic personal event. Some of these things, even some people could set boundaries around, and everybody would say, that's fair. If you say, oh, I went out to eat with like three or four friends last night, you know, Samantha was there. Oh, that's cool. That hits a lot differently than if you say, oh, I went out to eat last night with Samantha. We went to, you know, Ruth's Chris. We had like a $200 dinner and wine dinner. That doesn't and feel fair. That feels like cheating. A lot of people would say that's that's not okay. You've actually like cheated on your partner because you took a, another woman out on a date. So I don't right. I don't agree with this and idea that just because you're saying sex can be used like romantically, that's the only way you can treat it. And as soon as you've used it even a little bit on this recreational side, you've lost all yeah, ability to have romantic because, utilization because you wouldn't apply that same standard to literally any other activity in be, the world. Because sex is not like any other activity in the world. I didn't say, yeah, wait, 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 what do you mean it's not like any other activity? It isn't. It, like, sex is something that's unique because it has the ability to create new people. It is designed to bring people together in a close, intimate bond that no other natural activity is created for, towards. Well, and because so, it has those propensities, we have moral norms around it. And that in order to have prostitution and pornography, you have to say, well, those moral norms are just what puritanical people call it. It's not be, intrinsic sex, to the activity because, itself. And, and sex can be utilized for other things. For instance, when you masturbate, you're not procreating. And masturbation is about as natural as it gets. Plenty of people learn to touch themselves at incredibly early ages. It's like a natural part but it's of not, human development. But it is not natural. The state that we're in now where people can masturbate to all to a nearly an unending supply oh, wait, 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 I would, I would, like, I would like to, I would like to finish, please. Okay, it's okay. not relevant to what I just said, but it I'll bring it It absolutely is relevant okay. because we're talking about whether this is bad for society. No, we're not. We were talking about if it was natural. 
whether what's natural. Se you're saying that sex is made for procreation and blah, blah, blah. First of all, I ignore the fact that designed a designed process, <laughs> well, we could fight over that, but that's going to get into religion. But I'm telling you that there are forms of natural sexual exploration, like masturbation as you're growing up, that obviously don't produce children and aren't designed for that. I didn't, like a, I, didn't, I, I didn't say sex is for procreation. And that's not my answer to the question what sex is for. But I'm getting back that even if someone didn't have a complete answer to what sex is for, they wouldn't say, oh, well, it's like, dinner it's like other activities where there's just a multiplicity of meanings there's no correct meaning to it people have a lot of different meanings to it i think a lot of people would end up rejecting that wait so, it rejected but, how when, when when casual sex is so prevalent how, how, who, what do you mean a lot of people would reject that a lot of people will reject that when you talk about what is it what is it for like especially when you're in the context of a relationship well yeah in a context of a relationship it changes of course and, and the biggest the, tell, the most telling thing here in my opinion is all the social data shows the vast majority of it shows that these problems arise when there is no. no when there is a moral issue with it right because alcohol like you said there is a link they have linked at the n amount you drink with the a, a probability of it leading to problems with porn there is no link there's no study that can link the amount you watch with having problems with not it true. in your social life and even not true that's first not true. there are uh, studies done by nicole prouse who is a pro porn advocate in 2013 that shows there's lesser reactivity in the brain to people who frequently use porn to be able to have attachment to spouses or significant others Kuhn et al. in 2014 and other further studies in 2015 were the first to use magnetic resonal imagery to show the actual changes that take place in the brain when people frequently use pornography. It changes the brain and raises the dopamine ceiling so that in order to receive uh, sexual arousal, you need more and more uh, extreme and even violent forms of pornography in order to reach that. That's why you have things that now people are seeking out, not just sex, they're seeking out incest pornography, they're seeking out bestiality, they're seeking out group sex, rape play, and so that is bad when society falls more into whole, that pattern. The whole point of that Nicole Prouse study, which I have here, is it's the exact opposite of what you'd expect to see going on in the brain of someone with an addiction. This is her words, the findings are, suggest self-proclaimed porn addicts don't quite have the same relationship with porn as someone that substance, like with substance addiction. So yeah, she has done a lot of work. No, I'm a I big fan of her that shows that it's yeah. not a real addiction and a lot of it she was yeah, also agree. in this big study that found this is the quote moral incongruence around pornography use is consistently the best predictor of the belief that one is experiencing pornography related problems or dysregulation. It seems to be unlike alcohol unlike substances that it has a lot to do with how you feel about it and I can just give you <laughs> anecdotal experience from talking to so many people on my OnlyFans. My European fans those, those cultures where it's not like sex isn't seen as such a like terrible thing they the way they interact with me is like, hey, how are you? Can I get this video? And they're like, okay, cool. The people who have this moral incongruence, their behavior is super radical. They come, they go, then they delete everything, then they come back. Sometimes they send you a Bible verse. Like these people are really struggling. But, so, but then there are people who consistently ask for more and more kinds of, uh, frankly, bizarre. So Nicole Prouse uh, uh, talked about this study, I think it was in Croatia, where that there's actually evidence that they do it in the beginning, and then they eventually, the study they done showed that over time, they go back to the vanilla stuff. And she was attributing it more to people being like, oh, this is kind of weird, like, let me click on this. And then over time being like, okay, I'm over it. It's like kind of like a shock factor thing. That's what she found, and that's what she talked about. Yeah. And I would say there was a 2016 a study by Wright et al. that did a meta-analysis. The other thing I'm concerned about is it raises the dopamine ceiling, and this was a study that was done across uh, 22 countries showing an increase in the level of aggression in men who view pornography versus those who don't. And I think that makes sense when you look at the most popular forms of pornography involving things like domination, subjugation of women, uh, using verbal, you know, verbal abuse, gagging, asphyxiation, and, and a lot of other things. Like I said earlier about the in increase in things like incest and incest role play. Real quick, just on two questions. So first of all, when you say an MRI shows changes in the brain responding to dopamine levels of people that continue to use porn, this is true of probably literally every single stimulating activity, right? Yeah. Right. Like if you, okay, so that's not unique to porn. That would be the same in playing potato cards. Chip. That'd be the same <laughs> in eating potato chips. That'd be the same in playing video games. It'd be the same in watching movies or TikToks or whatever. So I don't know what that's supposed to be. Secondly, yeah, just so I can understand this too. It's in the relation of it's in the relation of what you find to be sexually arousing. That people who continue to use porn and use porn more more frequently 
need more and more varied or disturbing or intense what pornography the, have a in, in the sure. same way that an alcoholic mm -hmm. needs more potent alcohol to feel a buzz than when they first started drinking. Okay, that's those two things are completely <laughs> dissimilar. Wait, 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 hold on, wait. I'm sorry, um, real quick. Okay, I hear this brought up so many times, and I'm curious if there's an actual number on this. P I've heard this said over and over and over and over and over again. People who consume porn need to dramatically increase the extremeness of the porn they're consuming. What is the percentage of those people that that happens with? Because I've heard that said over and over again. Is that actually true, or is that just like something we say and we take? Well, it for I think the proliferation of—I mean, even what we were talking about. Nope, that's not an answer. I'm yes, asking yes, it, 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 it is, is an, an answer, answer, even if you don't like it. The fact that me. when you look at Pornhub's <laughs> most searched terms yep. over the past ten years and see that it's extreme things, which, by the way, your view can't tell me what's extreme or not. Okay, when, the when it comes 2022. To the searches that define 22 were reality, gender, group sex, outdoors. Those are the those positions, are, feet, and femdom. These so, are our top seven like types of searches. Uh, so, people, do you think it's extreme? People get from people Pornhub get, published do you think it's ex for 2022. First, yeah. Though that's not the complete search list. Those the, are highlights that were put up there. You have to scroll down more to get the. Full not, no, no. You said the top. I'm asking what are the top ones. Those These were the, the top highlights ones. that they put in that graphic. I know the page you're looking at. Oh, so you're saying that that if I go to look for the most common <laughs> searches, it's not those? Yeah. Oh, okay. Teen right. and yeah, step, scroll down more. step mom or step sibling. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. So the most search terms were hentai, Japanese, oh no, MILF, which is the opposite of teen, lesbian. Teen is teen. no, yeah, teen mysteriously disappeared after 2020 when at the same time Pornhub was indicted, not indicted, when Pornhub was being investigated for having child <laughs> sexual assault materials and credit card companies were refusing to work with them. If you go back and look at it from 2012 to 2019, teen is one of the most common categories searched for. It mysteriously disappears though after they have trouble with these credit card Wait, wait, card wait, companies. does it mysteriously disappear or do they just eliminate the category to try to stay on the safe side of like all the... Well, now, now they've realized, they, I don't know what they've done, but they have seemed to have <laughs> kept certain terms from being searched for, but other people go and search for them. And then, of course, there's other sites beyond Pornhub. There's Sure, there are. Okay, but so, I think we would consider this a but, good but thing. It's like a form look. of like regulation working, right? If we think that like people searching for teen well, porn And even bad, the ones you've put there, would you say hentai is a more extreme version of pornography? No. Uh, it depends I'm, on what you're looking for. <laughs> would you say it's more extreme? Um, it Do you think it's more extreme to, to be aroused <laughs> by watching someone be penetrated by tentacles? Well, t not all hentai porn is tentacle <laughs> porn. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of different types of anti. But that's but that's a, a common element of it. I, I don't the, know if I that's mean, right. Wait, Jasmine I want to circle back. Wait, wait, wait. I want to about this question. Nobody answered this. I want to know: does, Do we know? Because I've heard this said over and over and over again that people that start searching for pornography are going to gravitate towards more extreme versions. I'm curious: What are the percentage of people that start on the pornography road that end up at well, more extreme? Well, Jasmine was using anecdotal anecdotal examples of her. Okay, clients. gotcha. I just and you I, can go on wanna, from that. I just want to be no, clear no, then that this is repeated over and over again. We have no number are, on that. There's no data. People, that's just something that's said over and over again. I literally just told you what people tend to search for on the internet, and it's not like loving couple has sex so I'm, well and, and child sexual assault material is proliferating yeah we're so, talking so, around it i but, just but, i had a very clear question i was curious how many people start with vanilla porn and move on i'm looking I don't for think a number between one probably 100 percent because they start when they're uh, when they're 11 years old okay. and they probably see yeah. boobs naked people sex and then it quickly moves on from there based on these common search terms you see what's well, on there. So 100% you know, of people move on to hardcore. Of, yeah. No, I'm sure not 100%. I'm sure some 11 year old finds hentai and then they're really in for bad shit. Because of the work well, I do in speaking with young so women and, and the New York yeah. Times and others have done um, investigative reports on this, what young girls are reporting about sexual encounters that they have with other young boys and the extreme and often um, very uh, uh, disrespectful things that the young boys expect the young girls to do because of the pornography that they're exposed to on the internet. So well, I think it's living in unreality for you both to sit there and say, please let okay. me finish. Yeah. I think it's living in unreality for you both to sit there and say, porn is harmless, it's great, yeah, there's some bad stuff, but it has nothing to do with porn and everything's fine, when the reality is of your average young girl and your average young guy today, boy today, who's looking at porn on the internet is being exposed to rape porn, is being exposed to sexual assault porn, is being exposed to child sexual assault material, and a lot of young girls are reporting, and yes, we and don't have the exact statistics on it because it's hard in, to know this. It's not just the niche. It's not just the niche. In 2021, <laughs> Bella Delphine, one of the most... Uh, no, no, wait, she just said a whole thing. Do we get to respond and, to and, 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 Well, the last thing I was just going to say is these she, young girls She's doing are, kidnap role play. It's pretty, pretty common. I mean, uh, thank you. That's a good point. I mean, even this is a very prominent Dressed porn, as a child. I mean, a very prominent porn creator who's doing what Trent just said. But these young girls are reporting that they are being asked to do very degrading, demeaning things that are scary for them 
it's even on this podcast. I was at this yeah. on this. Okay, show, wait, you're just repeating your point. Okay, let's respond. Okay, I was saying how the guy wants to do you these aggressive, violent things with her, and she's uncomfortable. Okay. This is pervasive, gotcha. and you can pretend it's not happening, but it is. That's okay. fine. Okay, but like that, we can <laughs> argue that there might be negative uh, sexual behaviors that might be being picked <clears> up from porn, which is fine. If you've got numbers on that, I'd be interested. However, you don't think that's happening, Destiny? I do think it's happening, but okay. We don't. I'm glad we can agree that that. A that's lot of but the problem is a that. lot of women push for it too, so it's hard. It it doesn't matter who pushes for it. It has led to that. Is the it does when and away? But we don't know if it's led to it, though, right? It could have been. There could be these desires that also weren't being expressed or being expressed yeah. in other ways before. For so instance, saying, things like I I can tell you what I'm saying. You don't mm -hmm. have to say you're saying. I can just tell you what I'm saying, right? Things like, for instance, uh, sexual behavior at the workplace is inappropriate towards women. That's something that's been a pastime in workplaces for a long time. Men treating women in sexually uh, aggressive ways at workplaces that had nothing to do with pornography. Things like spousal rape or marital rape. These are things that have existed for a long time that weren't encouraged by or made for is, pornography. If you want to play history anecdotes, you can look at all of the conquests of cities where they're is, sacked Destiny, and all the women is are Is it your argument that the 11-year-old who's exposed to pornography and finds themselves suddenly looking at sexually, very explicit sexual assault material, uh, pornography, that when they then may try to act out aspects of it with a girlfriend, their first time in real life that that's a result not of the porn but they I don't think done this that. is happening yeah, I don't no think no let's I don't no, think I an 11 year old happening. I don't think an 11 year old's first porn video is that's like Bukake throat Destiny. fucker 69 Destiny, that's not and what then I he said takes his 12 year old girlfriend okay how do you how do you, you, you know that you're, 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 what I said I said that the 11 year old who's exposed to porn and gets hooked and starts to look for more and runs into because it's everywhere sexual assault material type porn torture type porn maybe child sexual assault material porn, that that kid, then if they act out some element of that in a, in a real life sexual relationship with a, a young girl, your your argument is that, well, they would have done that anyways, even without the porn? No, my is argument, argument is if you think that's happening, because I'm happening. 34 and I've grown up hearing all the same arguments from Jack Thompson about video games. That you think a boy's gonna play a game and take a chainsaw to a guy's face and saw it open and he's not gonna go and bully his friends or kill somebody at school? You don't think these schools are, I've heard all these immigrants. If you think it's happening, that's fine. You give me a plausible scenario where it, it could, it then, show it the then, then show it in well, the data. Then show it in the data. How many 11 year olds are choking the, their 12 year old girlfriends because the, they- I can pull the New York Times a report on this. Well, okay, no, and, and the New York also, Times report is gonna also, say that like this percentage of 11 year old students are choking their girlfriends? And also, I don't think we need to come here and say we know the exact we no 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 you need to present an argument you're, if you're trying you're presenting a positive argument you're saying that 11 year old Destiny. boys hold on let me restate your argument you're saying 11 year old boys are finding extreme porn and they're acting that with their, their girlfriends no that's even, if that's happening that's pretty bad Destiny. do you have any evidence even if happening? they're not acting it out with their girlfriend is it pretty bad is it pretty bad if somebody views something? Well, I, I don't I know a, the answer to that. We'd have to, that's it, something so, you would so research. Do you think it's okay for an 11-year-old boy to suddenly start be looking at rape? Probably not. Do you think it's okay, okay for an 11-year-old boy to hear his parents having sex? Do you think it's okay for an 11-year-old boy to see somebody naked so, at a beach? So you do you think, think those are No, the no, no, no. Answer that. Answer that. Answer those questions. Do you think, think it's okay for an 11-year-old boy? You're trying to boy? use them as comparisons. Do you and think I'm that an 11-year-old boy... I didn't say they were the same. That's why it's a comparison. If it was a comparison, it wouldn't be two different things that I'd be comparing. It would just be me saying the same thing twice. they're not a meaningful comparison because I didn't... Well, let's find out if it's a meaningful comparison. That's what I'm asking you. Can you tell me, is it appropriate for an 11-year-old boy to hear his parents having sex? No. I think that's inappropriate, but it is dramatically more scarring to walk in and see a rape happen. Scarring. Okay. Oh, okay. And then problematic. Then, then give me the study. To, then show me the data. So there's 11 year olds that are traumatized or scarred. Okay. Then show me. No, I don't have to. We don't have to. It's also overwhelmingly women that are seeking out this kind of stuff. So if there's a woman who's 13, 14, I was one of these and I was like, ooh, choking kind of hot. And then when I got a boyfriend, I was like, I want to try out choking. And we both agree that this is what we want to do. How is that harmful? Are you saying that it's not bad for a 13 year old girl to seek out a choking porn <laughs> no i don't think it's bad i think if that's what so you're then into, I, so you think maybe maybe it's a good thing then, to show and that i to also her. want to say where is this you, harm you think repeat this it's not bad for a 13 year old girl to seek out porn where women are choked as part of I sexual violence. I don't think violence. it's wrong for girls when they're exploring their sexuality and they do that through porn if they like being dominated like i'm one of these is girls it, to see that represented would it be wrong for an adult to show a 13 year old girl that <laughs> Yes, but it's, that's different. It's different because there's that imbalance thing. You're not supposed to show children this, but if a child, like if I, when how I was about, 13, How about 14, a 16-year-old boyfriend shows it to her? 
as if he's like, hey, are you into this? I don't think that's bad either. Wait, wait, sixteen year boyfriend or sixteen year girlfriend or sixteen year boyfriend with thirteen year girlfriend? Yeah, that's with a thirteen year old girl. Oh, well, that's uh, that's different. It's three years. Three years 15. Is typically. If it's within the before it becomes statutory rape, when they're not even supposed to be having sex. If it's sixteen and thirteen, in most states, they're not even supposed to be having sex. So or sixteen and fourteen. I know that the Romeo and Juliet laws. Yeah, so differ fifteen in every and case. sixteen or thirteen and fourteen, whatever you want to say. If it's two people <laughs> of the same age and they're just exploring what each other likes and there's consent and both people are comfortable with it and it turns them on, it's okay for them to. Explore. Wait, now let's go back then. So it sounds like what you're saying is, fine, 13, how about a 10-year-old girl is looking up this stuff? I mean, that's really young, but I think that's still part of like normal <laughs> exploration. I wish, I agree, I wish this wasn't available does, to children. Does, child, are children harmed when they see pornography? Well, the research on that is kind of mixed. I actually have a couple So studies. you, your answer is, I don't know? The answer is that there's uh, research going in both ways, and a lot. It's not just me that. So does if the research, so let me ask this: so if the research goes both ways, and we don't know, should it be yeah. a crime? Should it be a crime then to show children pornography? Yeah, I, I think children, yes, but we're not talking about. But, but why? Because you're saying give, we don't. You're saying we don't even but know if it causes harm. It's also a crime harm. to give children alcohol. Is alcohol bad? And the other thing I wanted to point it out can be is very that bad you're talking children. about the link. No, to we, here's why it's a crime to give children alcohol that children cannot consent to activities that are capable of gravely damaging them, or even damaging them at all. Like kids have to have their parents sign them up for sports teams. They can't just sign up on their own. So it seems like then that we'd have to agree that uh, if, if porn doesn't damage kids, then they don't need parents, they don't need consent, and they don't need a law to protect them, right? I if it doesn't think, damage I them. think that the, it's really mixed on if it damages or doesn't. So to err on the safe side with children, I'm okay with, I wish we could keep it away from children, but we can't. Can I, okay, let me, so by, by that, that, by, by that also, logic then, you know, people, there's, you know, differing opinions about whether childhood football damages children too much or not. So by that logic, we should treat childhood football teams as being as wrong and necessary to outlaw as showing porn to children. What, okay, wait, here's a question. Which doesn't make any what, sense. Which, what damages the child? Yeah, what? Yes, that's my question. No, that's my question to you now. Well, you're the ones promoting sex work and pornography. So, sure, so I'm asking, so I'm asking, I'm asking where question. you draw the line, because you're saying that it's clearly not, you're saying that porn is clearly over the line, despite the fact that you presented absolutely zero data to support that point. Whoops. So you're giving, that a that's child being exposed to pornography when they're 11 or 12 or 13 or whatever, are, are having all these negative outcomes. I don't think you provided a single well, stat for any of that, or a single point for any of that, other than it feels wrong. I mean, no, which I, is fine. It can feel no, wrong. I, there, a lot right, of wait, 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 wait. I did provide that. I mentioned the 2016 Right at All study with the 22 countries the meta sorry 22 that studies of children sorry. that sounded of all people it's talking about children young people and rise of aggression and use of pornography that's 22 studies across seven countries there are other studies that we can put forward okay well, so there's, 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 but, but even beyond the studies it's just an obvious okay stop. Well, I, like I, I would obvious, like to finish question, and i then i would love okay. to hear your response it just seems obvious to me that if a 12 year old boy has access to pornhub and can freely search it it won't take him long to find what we consider extreme pornography. And if he finds extreme pornography, what are those outcomes? So you talked about sexual aggression. There's a meta-analysis from the 1970s to 2020, and it shows that some show that there is, some show that there's not, but the studies that were done over a longer period, the link was weakened. It's also been found the studies that employed higher level of best practices tended to provide less evidence of a potential Well, link. there's a meta-analysis. The biggest predictors for sexual aggression, number one, alcohol. So there's again, is because alcohol seems to be actually showing us more conclusive harm in all of these respects. Is alcohol alcohol harmful is it there's, bad there's a meta i mean in excess it is absolutely there's a meta analysis and, that trent and i have both well, referenced we, that say that porn is connected but, to aggression um including but, but you're right and that's why and that's why for example with alcohol what we do is we have very stringent barriers to make sure to try to keep minors away from alcohol even though they do that so for example would you agree we ought to have very stringent barriers to keep children away from pornography for example all pornographic websites should require age verification I think that the problem is, is that practically speaking, the ones that are going to implement that are going to be the bigger ones, but it's the internet. You can't control the internet. So what's going to happen is those sketchy sites in Russia are going to be- <laughs> Why don't we just, why don't we just have a rule that all pornographic websites have to have a triple X domain? And then we can put them in one area that requires age verification. How about that? If if there was a way that we could actually make it so that you had to verify your age to be on these, then that it wouldn't lead to- just moving people over to sketchier places where they can still access because I don't know if you know the internet's pretty easy to find like crazy shit you don't and even if you go okay. especially the what's, sketchier what's worse on the sketchier stuff 
What do you mean what's worse? You're saying you're worried that if you use age verification to keep a kid off Pornhub, he'll go to a sketchier website. So the website. sketchier stuff, so for instance, places like Pornhub right now, they have gotten way stricter with the type of content you can put out. You can't put out, like if you search rape on um, Pornhub, nothing comes up. Can but you if do, you go to like some of these sketchier ones, they do come up. So your your issue is more... Can you, can you do um, step-sibling incest? Yeah, and I don't think that's necessarily... Like, okay, if someone views oh, step-sibling incest, where, what are they doing? What are they doing with that that's so harmful Is to Is step-sibling society? incest bad? Step-sibling, watching step-sibling incest. No, I'm just saying is the act of step-sibling incest bad? I wouldn't say it's 100% bad. And I want to know if you're saying it's bad, why? Where, where are the outcomes? Because I'm looking at Because family members here. shouldn't have sex with each other. That seems I'm looking at outcomes here. So I'm saying if people are watching this more aggressive because porn. Because if you have two where, kids. Where, where is that? Like, where so is that? that? Come because on. If you have two I don't kids. need a study to know that I shouldn't have sex with my sister, whether she's it, by law or blood it, but or is, brother. Is watching, it make, is watching it increasing step-sibling uh, incest? That's my question. Is watching this stuff increasing it happening? Are people having more <laughs> incest now in real life? Or are they just watching it? It desensitizes sizes one to it yes so are but is that actually leading because the same thing happens with violent porn but there's a lot of studies that show it can kind of have a cathartic well, effect and that sexual crimes actually decrease again, when people watch it is the, so my question is the meta-analysis with 22 studies that show that a increased use in porn increases in okay and there's this is a meta-analysis of even more that shows that some of them do some of them don't but the ones that had <laughs> best practices show a weakened link so i guess what, what, what best practices Best practices means like having the uh, like peer review, better control group, more people. Oh, you're talking about studies, not the point. Yeah, I'm talking about studies. So the studies that have best practices employed, that's what this meta-analysis from 1970 to 2020 found, show that that, 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 weak, that no, link is what, actually what, weakened. What, what, what and then I if am, you look at actual the, crimes happening, but what I am surprised, happening what in society. What I am society, surprised by is, is that happening? you can't make a moral decision without saying, well, let's see what these psychological studies say, even though we're in the midst of a replication crisis. But, well, let me finish. We're in the midst of a replication crisis where many sociological studies in some instances 70 or 80 percent can't be replicated so we don't know if the studies conditions are accurate we can't just go with the very basic element of hey getting an erection at watching fake rape that's probably a bad scenario. That's probably bad if people do that. Well, here's the thing. You're talking about incest, right? If we're seeing yeah, that's that people, bad. That's people, also rape. people are watching step-sibling, step-sister stuff, it's not making them more likely to do it. We have no evidence. It's not leading to greater aggression do, in society. Way, Hold on a it's not leading to anything. If the harm I, is just minimized to them seeing it and being aroused by it, is that I inherently bad? I just want to get something clear. And if I just so, wanna, why? Can I get something clear? You're okay with people being aroused and ejaculating over rape porn you're okay with that <laughs> as long as it's something that if it's and not real and if it's consensual okay. actors and yes, you're okay, okay with, with someone that. getting aroused and ejaculating over um uh incest porn yeah as long as and again, would you be okay with someone ejaculating and being aroused over child sexual assault material provided it wasn't a real child it was a simulation if it and same thing if it was a simulation i would look at what the consequences are if it's leading especially when some of them show it's leading to less actual harm to children or if it's leading to less sexual aggression in person if it's leading to less sa so which a lot of okay. studies show then i think yes i think if you're just getting aroused by it but to, you, there's no harm me, being me, done wait. what about a child being raped but it's a simulation and it's okay for someone to ejaculate over that in your mind uh, i would say that if that if okay, here's the thing: some people have that proclivity, and if watching it when there's no real child, if it's AI, and that prevents somebody from actually acting this out, has a cathartic effect. There's no evidence effect, that prevents say. it. No. There's <laughs> evidence that watching <laughs> by, that, that the here's the that difference. has a cathartic but effect on okay. actual well, essay. Here's, here's yeah. the difference. Okay, you're so okay it sounds that. like you're saying, well, how can we really how disgusting. can we really know that people desire something virtually that they don't also we have no idea if they really want it in real life if it primes them for that. That's not what uh, I'm saying. What, what, I'm well, saying, what you're saying is that it might be confined to the virtual, and so they don't have the desire to do it in I'm real life. I'm saying all the evidence that we have shows that it either is confined to the virtual or is actually preventing. That's At least not, when it comes to true, sexual aggression, yes, what I it, have three what studies is one right of the, here What is one of the main, is it true that one of the main reasons, there's different reasons women quit OnlyFans, right? Mm -hmm. Is one of the main reasons that they find they make more money doing escorting? I have no idea. Have I don't, no I've idea? never heard You're of anyone I know. That? Anyone I know has never quit to do escorting. No. Do any do any people who do OnlyFans make supplementary income from escorting? Some do. It's okay. against the rules of OnlyFans. If they found out, you get kicked off. But okay. or other campsites. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Okay. But what? So do you think then in those cases that 
it's plausible someone begins on a cam site, they're excited by this virtually, and then they want to take it to the next level, and that's how that happens. What do you mean? What happens? They're now sexually that, assaulting the, the No, no they're, cam they're having a physical act of intercourse with this person they first experienced on cams. Yeah, what does that have to do, though, with having higher what rates I'm of, si of child what I'm sexual assault? What I'm saying, then, is that assault. if we see in these circumstances where <laughs> someone begins, they're aroused by virtual contact with, a, with someone, and then they it instincts, well, I want to take it to the next level. That's going to really make me aroused and go and meet that cam girl in person. Why wouldn't that apply also to virtual acts because of rape? Because all the data shows that it doesn't. Because these two things have absolutely no... Even people wait, like yeah. Jordan Peterson have talked about how there seems to be a cathartic effect from watching it that actually leads to less of this happening in real life. And I have some studies that show that. We... You, you have no evidence saying that people watching this leads to more of it. In fact, there's evidence that's lean, leaning in the there's, other direction. There's Wait, many Destiny, cases you wanted, of, to, you wanted to ask something. <laughs> that, yeah, these arguments are completely and totally disconnected. The idea that if somebody gets into some type of work that might continue on down that type of work doesn't at all feed into like, well, isn't it obvious that if somebody watches porn? Like, that's like saying like, if you start drinking at all, you're gonna become an alcoholic. And it's like, well, why would you say that? Well, isn't it likely that somebody that works as a bar back might become a bartender someday? So why wouldn't like that, that argument there, is no, I, there's no there, connection whatsoever. There, there are many cases mm -hmm. of people that are uh, ultimately caught for the use of child sexual assault material. And one of the things that gets them extra penalties is that they were actively seeking to act out the fantasy that they were playing and the attacks that they were doing against these children in their mind in, on real life children. They had difficulty accessing real life children. Yeah, so I think it's, it's a very... It's a very much living in unreality argument that I think. Why do we have no we can, evidence of this actually increasing that? We, we can't to, can't to do, say that people can live this whole life in their minds, that they're acting out in their bodies through ejaculation, and that's not going to affect anything that they do in the real world. But yet, that seems to be the case with <laughs> yeah. movies and video games, where a, a kid can sit in front of a, a computer and play 12 hours of violent video games a day, and lo and behold, he doesn't go out in the real world and I kill think, somebody. I think training yourself and actively sexually arousing yourself and ejaculating no. over these activities. No, I, mean, I, I don't think there's a mental arousal that happens. I agree they won't always There's a mental arousal that happens when you're out there killing people in but video games, screaming like, kill you and kill you. But to say there's no connection, I think is an un... Well, the connection has to be proof with... Child sexual abuse has gone down since the proliferation of porn. That's not true, Jasmine. There is. Child sexual abuse has not gone down. A study from the University of New Hampshire that the decline of 30% or more in Is this reported right. child sexual right. abuse, Jasmine? Yes, but so where is your evidence okay. then that it's just unreported now, but right. it's going I up have, because people are watching? We have, this, where is that evidence? We have insane rates of child sexual abuse in this country. And it's gone up and we since have, the proliferation uh, and of we've porn? Had, I, well, it's in conjunction with the proliferation I, then, of Then it porn. should go up. If, if porn I, I, I being they're, introduced they're to society has, let, has made this worse, then where is that evidence? It's not just porn. It's also, <laughs> we, we haven't talked about this very much, it's also prostitution. You want data? I'll give you data. Look up. Cho et al, C-H-O, a 2013 study covering 150 different countries showing an increase in human trafficking when prostitution is legalized. Wait, who, no, none of us even disagree with this. Yeah, that's, that's... But that's, but that's sex work. Why is sex work bad? Prostitution is sex work. Sex work's bad because it leads to other bad things like human trafficking. But Wait, that doesn't make the sex work itself bad. Yes, it does. Because you can you can use other hold methods on wait let's say let's say it was the case that most of the alcohol we drank yeah. in the United States came from the cartel would that make alcohol bad? No, it would make it bad if using alcohol <laughs> also fueled some other extremely dangerous violent form. That's of what alcohol I just said. Use. Let's say that hypothetically opium was grown in Af in the fields of Afghanistan and that was a huge export for them. Does that make it bad to consume all products, all medical products related to painkillers? No, I'm not talking about remote cooperation with evil. What I am saying is that if you have different policies when it comes to something like prostitution, yes. for example, if you have a policy where you uh, legalize it and so it's legal to both buy and sell sexual services like yes. you say you have in Germany or, or other countries where that's allowed yep. you have an increase in human trafficking but if you have other countries wait like, but the increase in human trafficking isn't necessary for the sex work it's just a byproduct yes of it is and I will market. explain yes it is and I will explain why okay. because when you legalize prostitution to there and let's say human trafficking goes up or down there's going to be two different things that happen here there's going to be the scale effect and the substitution effect okay so the substitution effect would be oh you would think if prostitution is is legalized you know human trafficking will go down because you have legal prostitutes now they substitute for the illegal prostitutes and the hope would be it would go down because of this substitution wait what is it how I'm sorry, wait, what is the substitution effect? The sub, there's the question of the relationship between human trafficking. Wait, I'm just curious, what is the substitution effect? The substitution effect is that I, 
human trafficking would go down, illegal prostitution goes down because it's substituted with legal <laughs> prostitutes. You have sex with a legal prostitute instead of an illegal one. Okay. That's the substitution effect. Okay, gotcha. that, would, okay. that would drive the number down. The other problem though is the scale effect that when you make it legal, there is now a massive increase in demand for this, and there's not enough prostitutes in order to satisfy the demand, so trafficking goes up in order to meet that demand. So the Cho et al. study, 2013, 150 countries, including longitudinal, the show Germany before and after, so it's not correlative, shows that the scale effect always dominates the substitution effect. So when I look at that, I say, oh, legalizing prostitution this way, that seems really bad. Maybe we should do something else like the Nordic model where you don't criminalize women for selling sex, you criminalize men for buying it, and that really okay, cuts down. Okay, so then back to my original question. Wait, 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 before, we, before we jump into a whole different thing. Okay, so back to my other question. If for alcohol then, if it was the case that we just, every time we buy more alcohol, it seems like, you know, in, in either cartels or gangs or whatever are the ones producing it, would you then say that we ought to outlaw alcohol because it seems like every time we increase our purchasing of it, it always comes from, it seems to come from unethical sources. We should outlaw alcohol if there are more social ills than social no benefits. No one is talking about social ills or benefits. I'm yes, that, that is always the case that no, you make when you said that there was uh, a can substitution. I, can I finish? Can I finish? Well, hold on. You just talked for like 30 minutes. You want to answer a simple question. I did answer and you're interrupting me. You're, I said that if uh, there's, okay. when you have social benefit, when you choose to outlaw something, you have social benefits and social ills that you have to weigh involved. Alcohol provides social benefits, and there are also social ills I'm that are associated talking, I'm with only talking about but, the substitution and the scale effect. Those are the only two. I don't know why we're bringing in this whole other thing now. You Wait, brought up alcohol. Destiny, yeah. what's the question that Mike, you wanted he, he him to He said answer? that there is a substitution effect, but when you legalize something, you bring in legal prostitutes instead of a consumption of illegal prostitutes. However, the scale effect, due to the increase in the overall consumption of this particular good or service, leads to more people being brought in and sex trafficked. So the, the, the fact that you were trying to substitute out legal for illegal people doesn't matter, because even if the percentage of illegal consumption decreases, the overall per capita increases, which causes an increase in the illegal amount of, of prostitutes being used. So inc therefore increases sex trafficking. So my question was, well, let's say if we take something like alcohol or any other good or service you can buy, if it was the case that the mass scale consumption of this necessarily means that it's being consumed from countries that are engaged in slave shops or drug trade or cartels or whatever, would you <laughs> no, outlaw it's not, any it's of not, those? No, it's not a correct analogy. You'd have to show me an example where you have a legal and an illegal version of the same product in the market market where it's being purchased and it drives the illegal version pr of the product up. Yeah, like you're, I, you're using it. You're, is. No, you're using it, but it's too disanalogous to even make the point that you're trying and to also, make. The, Wait, the hold on. It's not disanalogous. I'm saying, let's the say there's a drug. This drug is something that a bunch of people around the United States smoke or drink or whatever. Mm -hmm. But let's say that it was, okay, well, let's legalize it. But then when we legalize it, there's such a demand for it that now like all the cartels in Mexico are making it. But, but, Would you say we shouldn't legalize it because of that reason? Yeah, if it, if it leads to a greater net increase in substance abuse to harm society, then we might want to outlaw that. I'm not drug, even talking about example. substance abuse. I'm just talking about an increase in the people selling it being bad people because we have a, such a higher <laughs> demand for it. Now the supply is coming from like and, bad but sources. But it's not selling. That's the whole point here. It's not about selling a product and the bad people. It's about the fact that when prostitution is legalized, sex slavery goes up. And the fact that we're even having this discussion about comparing people in sex slavery to products made in different countries very much shows the entire problem with the situation. If you want, we can well, compare it to sweatshops the then. If you want to do that, problem, sweatshops versus like normal The other problem with your analogy, Destiny, is that yeah, sex, no problems is, it, sex is good. And okay. sex is beautiful between, in the right context. And so <laughs> to compare it to alcohol, but restrict it just to prostitution sex happening is also a problematic <laughs> because, I mean, alcohol you can use in the right context, right? Sex in the right context in our position is, is an amazing and a great thing. What our point is is that in the context of sexual exploitation and commodification, commodification that's when it becomes problematic and, um, and, and harmful and wrong. And Jasmine, you were saying, well, for kids, there's no problem with kids looking at pornography necessarily, um, et cetera. I didn't say there's no there problem. Are, I said that it's not this, I think having alcohol, violent video games, all of this can show, just because something has harm doesn't mean that now we need to get rid of it, right? <laughs> the Second Amendment, guns probably yeah. do a lot more harm than porn. Does anyone here want to ban but guns? But just to finish The my, First Amendment, yeah. right? People say mean things on the internet now because we have the First Amendment, but that outweighs that. So if you want to say something should be banned because of social ills, I need a lot of evidence. We're talking and about there can't is, be we're, so we're much. We're not Jasmine, talking about banning. Hold on, hold on. Jasmine, we're talking about is sex work good is the question. Is it, or is and, it bad? And, yeah. and you asked, well, what about you know, kids looking at objectifying 
pornography on the internet or you know, sexual assault porn, that's not necessarily bad. There are over 100 studies that have revealed links between young people's exposure to objectifying content and their objectification of women or self-objectification. <laughs> Those exposed to objectifying portrayals are more tolerant of or in agreement with sexual harassment, adversarial sexual beliefs, rape myths, child sex abuse myths, and interpersonal violence than participants right. without this exposure and experience greater body dissatisfaction, appearance anxiety, and disordered eating so beliefs. This is the thing. So I to say again, to, to argue that kids being exposed to porn, or for that matter, adults using porn, is harmless, there's no negative effect to them or the way they view other people is simply I false. didn't say there's no <laughs> negative effect to them. I'm saying the negative effects are not even that conclusive. Adolescence and pornography. You're, you kept saying 20, to us, what are the no, negative effects? Up. What are the negative effects? A review effects? of 20 years of research since 2005, more than 65 <laughs> empirical studies have appeared with a peak of 11 articles in 2011. The reviews have come to opposite conclusions, notably about the question of whether pornography is related to adolescent sexual attitudes and behavior. So some find there is, some find there isn't. The problem here is that if we just do evidence-based, I have a lot of studies that probably show the opposite yeah, so we can just ask a basic question, which I've been continually asking and did not get a straight answer from, that <laughs> you've seen, you're not committed to the idea that it's be, just bad. Yeah. It's bad when children 10, 11 years old see porn. If it is bad, like you say, there's some studies that say, what is bad? What does, it, what does it do to them? You came close earlier. You guys are saying, well, they might not understand how sex ought to be or determine what's real or not real in it. So would you agree that pornography has distortions of sexuality in it? That of children like what? I mean, I, especially if you look at, so in fact, like things like OnlyFans has made that problem better for just general society. A lot of the uh -huh. studies on OnlyFans shows that it actually helps people understand sex. People report feeling more educated. They report improvements in their sex lives. So sex education is good, right? But like if I have a child, what, my what? point isn't going to be like poor and bad. It's going to be like, hey, look, this is not how sex always is, right? If you, there's all, And now there's so many different kinds of porn out there that show different kinds of sex. Amateur is there porn. some kind of consensual sex that people should never do? Like, can you give me an example? Well, I'm sorry. Is there some kind of sexual behavior? I will give you an example. I'm curious to see how your guys' ethics would apply to this, because I think that this view of sex that is, not, that is grounded in pleasure, even if it's grounded in consent, you're going to have problems. I'll give you an example. So a month ago, Peter Singer, one of the most famous philosophers in the world, uh, shared an article on Twitter from the Journal of Controversial Ideas. And he said, this is really interesting. Uh, and it was a defense of bestiality. Okay, and it was an interesting defense of it because I think it goes through many of the common arguments that are made against bestiality and shows why a lot of them don't work. Uh, you know, for example, uh, well, I guess, I mean, I could ask you, I'm trying to know what your reason would be, but it seems like, okay, I'll put it this way, all right? I think what you might say is that obviously bestiality is wrong because in order for sex to be moral, there has to be consent and animals can't consent. Yeah, Okay. that would be my view. I don't think, I don't think that that's a, a good argument because we eat animals number one yeah that's good we eat animals without their consent we do normally we just say to do a scientific experiment on somebody you need their consent right you're a lawyer yeah you need their consent but there's certain things at least you, you can't do even with their consent now right but to do a, any scientific experiment you need the patient's consent yes but we do scientific experiments on animals all the time without consent and i'll give you um one, you know, one more example. So let's say like uh, police canine units. Uh, I gave the martial arts example earlier that if I do martial arts with somebody without consent, that's assault. They need to be okay with me punching them in the head. So police officers train canine units and they assault them. They fight them. They teach them how to subdue a, su a suspect. They basically get involved in fighting with a dog and the dog can't consent to that, but we don't consider that animal abuse. So if it's okay for cops to rough up a dog to teach them how to subdue a, a suspect, why wouldn't it be okay for someone on OnlyFans to let their clients see their dog lick peanut butter out of their vagina? So this is different. We probably have different views on this. I don't think that that's okay. I don't think the way we treat <clears throat> animals is okay. I, I would disagree with, I don't think we should be testing on animals the way that we are. Okay, we treat sure. them as completely non-human. I don't think that's necessarily intellectually consistent. Are you vegan? I'm not vegan, but I'm an asshole for that. Okay. Yeah, Do, I should be. Let's but, of all the, but, no, but of all the ways we could treat animals, <laughs> mm -hmm. of eating them, doing experiments on them, uh, making them do hard agricultural work, do you, think that the, do you think that the least 
violent way to treat them would be things like letting them eat peanut butter off somebody's penis. I think some of the experiments thing. that they do on animals, especially when it comes to like mental health, where they like purposely put monkeys and scare them and do all this. I think, yeah, you, if you just fucked a monkey, it'd probably be better than if you did all that shit to a monkey so that you can, huh? uh, <laughs> so that you can gauge how. Whoa, how did we get to <laughs> monkey fucking? Because yeah. if sex is just for pleasure, animals like pleasure too. And we're all animals. We're a different species. Yeah. This view that undergirds prostitution and pornography can't coherently explain why it's wrong. I and yeah. I think that that's a problem. Okay. Well, and I, I think, just I, I mean, would just like to make a we, quick statement. I just like to make the whatever podcast does not endorse bestiality. <laughs> I do. I'll, I need to do a couple chats here, and then we'll continue on with the conversation. We have Doctor Clockwork. A common reason of divorce is leaving the cap off of the toothpaste. Is brushing your teeth now bad? Correlation does not equal causation. People have lots of reasons for divorce, usually more than blank. Okay, Doctor Clockwork. Thank you. Appreciate it. We have Devon Frame here coming up in just a sec. Just waiting for it to pop up. Hey, Devon Frame, thank you. Human beings tend to twist and molest everything they dip their toes in. You religious folks should know that well. How do you propose we better build healthy, functional adults? Hussar Milker? I have no idea what that means, but uh, um, how do you propose we build, we better build healthy, functional adults? I don't know if that's virtue. Really worth okay. the habitual predisposition to choose the good. Okay. Well, I yeah. think I think it. I think you have to have a realistic assessment, and you have to acknowledge the real biological forces that exist in people, rather than trying to design systems around virtues that are of religion or other sorts of origination. Um, we've seen this fail over and over and over again, and it has failed, and it will never come back. The idea that sex can just be confined to one marital thing is just something that, even for most of human history, hasn't gone well. I, th I think when and, people try to have relationships where sex is open and can be shared with lots of people that's where we see failure sure i, I but we see 50 percent of marriages fail that, that don't even have those issues so and we it see, seems like there, i think that the i think that the better thing to do is to say there are different ways that you can engage with sex here are the pros here are the cons if you engage with it in this way things like this can happen or things like this can happen and then if you engage with it this way here are the good things or bad things i think the problem is everybody is so ideologically driven to attack one side or support another they end up making absurd statements like you know everybody should be happy with this style of monogamous sexual relationship in marriage and anything else is wrong or Everybody should be, you know, in a polyamorous fucking 500 people, and that's totally okay. We'd say every, everybody deserves love that doesn't need to be satisfied uh, by other people as sexual objects. Yeah, that's and I, fine, and, and that's, that, that sort of view has led to, you know, histories of marital rape and women not even, yeah. like, having <laughs> orgasms in relationships. The case is that sex like, has know. a particular design to it, and we can pretend that it doesn't, but it does, and that design tends towards intimacy and connectivity between two people and it can also create life and I think when we pretend that that's not the truth about sex and we say that sex is just whatever I want on my own terms provided there's consent then we open the door to all of these things to your point Jasmine you're saying well there's all these studies that show pornography doesn't cause so many issues I have all these studies that show that they actually lead to object objectification in real life and all these other problems um, when you look though at the data of people who are promiscuous or having multiple sex partners that's when you see in in, in, what are people doing in real life? People very harmed and people experiencing more addiction, people experiencing more mental health issues. Yeah, but wait, so, so then do you think that we should heavily discourage so, so again, or, or to socially go to your get rid of... Yeah. of saying that sex is whatever and let people do what they want to I do? Mean, so wait, wait, so all, form, all forms problems. of sex then that aren't leading to like procreation and relationship building between husband and wife then in your eyes are basically like things that should be heavily sec uh, socially discouraged so or So as unethical. an example, this is a New Zealand study. Well, when, no, no, wait, I'm asking, I'm asking from a moral perspective like for example this like, is not do a moral think, perspective this is data you, this no no what you just gave me when you say sex is designed for something that's a moral perspective that's well, a, uh, it's a philosophical position yes yeah, which is but moral i'm talking in nature, about the yeah. data proves but i'm not i'm not talking about the data. data i'm asking you morally you think okay. that the only type of sex that should be encouraged in society or should be allowed in society should be sex that is for the design of like having children basically uh i think it can include se having children but no it's designed for the for marital sex love, makes for okay, so then what about wait i just so then like, for things like gay sex or lesbian sex are in your ideal society are these things essentially not allowed or I think, I heavily think discouraged that, i think that sex is designed for lifelong love to two, for, between two people and it is designed to be life giving Giving. Now, that doesn't mean every sexual act is life-giving or that everybody can give life through sex, but it's designed for that. And I think that's the reason, one of the reasons. Yeah, but can we engage marriage, in it outside of that? 
So for instance, are gay people having sex always committing a social sin in your eyes? Is that always a I, bad I, thing? I think that, yes. I mean, I don't to, think that. Okay. Do you think that all forms, so, and then one more thing. Do you think all forms of sodomy are also, debate, do you think that all think forms good. of sodomy are also like social sins? So any oral sex, any anal sex, all of that is also well, like. Well, ag again, I think if you want to talk about the, the Catholic teaching on this, and I. No, I'm asking for your teaching. I'm not asking Catholic teaching. I'm a Catholic. All right, we're not. Our view is not what's, we're not debating whether Catholic teaching on sexuality is true or not or good. No, but the positions that you're giving to counter the sex work debate are ones that would necessarily include these but positions. But even, it's not not even, even if you don't hold this position, you can say this. Well, then, but you haven't given those arguments. Well, here's what I, well, no, here's what I would uh, say. The question of whether homosexual conduct or sodomy, sodomy, whether it's between people of the same sex mm -hmm. or people of the opposite sex, the question of is that disordered, you cannot answer that question unless you have answer a previous question, which is when is sex ordered? Okay, so I put forward the view that I think the only way to explain why things like incest, bestiality, uh, you know, infidel, you know, gross promiscuity, infidelity, other things, ordered towards a very particular expression of love between a man and a woman. But even if you didn't hold to that view, uh, your view can't really say when sex is ordered when it's properly ordered to a certain end, all you can say is, well, you just gotta make sure it's consensual. But after that, that's you know, the morality it's not, it's not that you're proposing. I, I think, consent. yeah, I and think I'm, that we I'm, can propose like very simple I'm, things around like, as long as it's consensual, as long as it doesn't lead I mean, to like the, obvious exploitations of like but, certain but, people. But so Destiny, for instance, you probably shouldn't be able to have today, sex until your kidney today, or something like that, right? Destiny, the question yeah. today is, is sex work bad for society? And we're talking about, you're talking about and, and presenting a view of sex where provided there's consent between adults everything's fine and dandy, and you're saying, well, the data bears out from pornography that it's fine and dandy. I'm saying, well, we have all this data that shows that it's not, and you're saying, well, we then do we and not And the consensus know? is on my side. And, right? and, <laughs> and, and there's a lot of other data that we haven't even talked well, about yet. That I I well, one well, thing before, yeah, wait, wait, before we get into that, let me just read the rest of the chats. We have four chats, so let me just get through them, and then we'll uh, continue on. Modest Takama, hey, thank you, man. Brian, love the real debate format. Thank you for setting it up. Destiny, props for coming back multiple times, although I mainly disagree with you. It is nice to hear actual discussion from the other side rather than libs screeching libs screeching be a good band name that would be a great band name destiny do you play any instruments by chance or went to school for music so yeah okay piano and saxophone yeah okay there you go we have fear maddox hey thank you hello brian i find this interesting i have friends who goes out much etc and i'm that only friend who doesn't because i have some level of self-respect virgin my friends don't believe me why do people think there aren't men who have self-respect not entirely related to, to the yeah, conversation no, that ends, because but. it's it's like looked down on in our culture to be a virgin or to pursue pursue abstinence and i think good for you i think that takes a real a, a lot of virtue good for you fear <laughs> maddox we have kyle whittington hey thank you question for destiny and trent at what point is consent no fuck, wait hold on i'm sorry wait. can i respond to the last one no Wait, if, if, hold on, I'm sorry, real quick. You, you want to go back to the last yeah, one? Yeah, if you want to be a virgin or if you want to be promiscuous, <laughs> okay. you should do some exploration of your own values and don't let people like um, Lila. So I'm not allowed to encourage You're not allowed to different. bully people because that's, that's just as bad. You are. When you're like, when you say, she literally just said, the answer, the answer, answer shouldn't be, the answer shouldn't be, the answer shouldn't be good for you for, uh, you know, having self respect. But because that's the exact same answer that third wave feminists would ever say, like, so Lila can't Affirm the boundaries people. he set for himself. I thought sex I mean, was all about making my, boundaries. You're shaming my response what you to him. should say Destiny. is you should figure out what works best for you so sexually. You're to you him. should do that exploration. And instead, because if that guy would have said, hey, I went out and I fucked 20 people and my friends all looked down on me, why don't they have self respect? You wouldn't be affirming his bound. You'd be saying, I oh, would no. I wouldn't affirm that. I would exactly. think that was harmful to so, him. You, so you weren't affirming anything healthy for him. You just like so that he was I'm not ideologically to have aligned a with you. of affirmation in this debate that someone pursuing abstinence. You should affirm people because they've done the appropriate level of exploration to figure out this is what's right for them, not because you're just pushing. Them. Just destiny. the question isn't whether someone. Okay, the question is not whether they align with the ideology. You can't shame me for having the view that they're I don't give people reality. credit for exploration. I give them credit for having the right answers. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Having the right answers doesn't matter. What matters is how you get there. It's well, more important. Well, you're assuming that he doesn't get there through some thoughtful process, and I think that's unfair. Of you when your answer that. is because I have self-respect, that's the answer everybody gives to justify literally any stupid behavior. I, I, I think that that's I think that that's uh, diminishing this young man. And, and people and his talk comments. about respect so. to justify good behavior that they're disrespected or they have respect <laughs> for themselves and they're not going to do things like allow themselves to be objectified. Respect can be a very respect can be an, a very good reason for something. You can't just throw it down the. 
That's thing. great. And the same argumentation has been used to shame women out of even exploring their own vaginas until they're 30 years old. Like, you can use shitty arguments to justify anything. That's what I'm saying. It's the argument that matters, so is, is not the like the correct outcome. Is what triggered you? Or what the, yeah, the, it's the idea that when people just give a position, they say, I do this, and my friends think that, wow, why don't they have respect? Then it doesn't sound like something they've truly explored. It sounds like a position they've been like either bullied or brainwashed into, and not so something they spent a good time. That comment, the comment that was the assumption. I could be wrong. Or, but. I, I don't think, I think that it's unfair to assume that simply because someone is that's great, but you've already affirmed that if they would have given the exact opposite unusual, answer with the same argument, you would have disagreed with them. So you don't even someone, care about their but, argument, but you think, just care about the I think the you're position. making the point, the point that I was trying to make, which is you, that in our society today, we applaud or accept um, sexual promiscuity. That is and not true. But. I think largely speaking, especially like younger people, it's actually feels shameful for some of them. If they are a virgin, they think, oh, what's wrong with me? And I think that we've forgotten, uh, we've, we've, we've lost a sense of respect and appreciation for people who are trying to live a virtuous life. What, what, what point in U.S. history is everybody proud to be virgins? More. I think today people... No, I no, think, when would we... Are you saying like in the 80s, people were proud? It's like, well, I'm it's, 30 and I'm a virgin. I'm so, 25 and I'm a virgin. No, it's not so much about even virgin as it is about virtue. Is it about having um, self-restraint and yeah, choosing I'm, I'm to not delay just going sexual out activity? Having, I'm not I'm just going out having casual sex. Okay. And it's so like, I think that was we just the said, point good. of this young man that we think he was that's making. A good thing. And I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. All right, we have uh, Kyle Whittington. Question for Destiny and Trent. At what point is consent irrelevant? What would be some examples of actions that would be wrong regardless of consent and why? Well, actually, I have an example of this. Destiny said something that reminded me. He, got, he talked about it. He also said exploitation. And you talked about selling kidneys. That actually does have a little bit of a relation here. It's not just we've been talking a lot about behavior, like doing this, doing that. But the big problem with prostitution pornography is the money. OK, it's money that leads to things like exploitation. So, for example, uh, I would say it's good for somebody to donate plasma, donate bone marrow, donate kidneys that helps other people. And it's good that they do that. But when you start, but if you pay people for those things, for example, the United States is one of the few countries on Earth that pays people for blood plasma. Most other countries on Earth, you can't be paid for blood plasma. And we do it here. And most blood plasma donation centers, they're at like they're on the border. They're in the poor parts of town. And when you pay people, so we have to ask, even though they're consenting to giving up parts of their body, is that exploitation that they're basically doing it because they're trying to get money? If we have ethical problems about using money to get people to give up their body, their, their blood, their bone marrow, their kidneys, and that we're exploiting them because of the money that's involved, the same questions will be raised about people who will get money by giving their body in something like OnlyFans. And it's out there as a virtual image, and it's out there permanently. So the same ethical issues get raised about exploitation. So who's exploiting me? Who's exploiting you? Yeah, you just said that if you do sex... The, the, the CEOs that make millions of dollars from uh, OnlyFans and don't have to take their clothes you off. You could say that about any but any industry in America. That you could say well, capitalism... No, because most industries, you don't take the clothes off. It's possible so, see, to exploit oneself. So it's the taking oneself. the clothes off. It's the yeah. taking but the clothes off that you have an issue. It's, it's the, the moral it, issue it's you not, have No, it's not the moral issue. Off. It's the commodification. And it's possible it's that, to exploit oneself. That's why you can't yeah. sell your own kidney. Oh, or you can't sell your own One hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Thank you. For Trent... Jasmine oh and Leela, do you think it is a big brain move for a husband to let other men cream pie his wife or nice for him face. to suck men's penises? Mm. Or is it more likely to cause a failed relationship? We're not answering that. Good question. I think that one of the things you're talking about when you talk about the kidney <laughs> thing is we've talked about consent a lot, but I think the topic that we're really getting towards is something called informed consent. So somebody's ability to give consent to something. For instance, a 14-year-old can theoretically consent to sexual activity with an adult, but they can't have an informed consent because they're only 14. We would say, can they decide to have sex? Sure, but do they understand all the ramifications? No, and that's where the right. issue between whether it's moral or immoral comes in. I think when we look at things like kidney donations, I think that when we look at the informed consent, we're looking at is there a group of people that are they have enough knowledge to make a decision, <laughs> and if they do, uh, and there are no other mitigating factors, the question then becomes like, why would you prevent them from doing so? So let's say, for instance, we say, okay, we do blood plasma donations, but that we pay 50 bucks a service for, or you know, like medical studies we pay people for participation in. If you do that, is it an unethical transaction? Well, let's say you say, yes, it is, and then we get rid of it. Well, what have you, what, what, like, what are the social goods that you've achieved there? We have less blood plasma donated. People that are poor that could have made money donating the plasma don't have it anymore. 
like like what what is the positive Be outcome that's happened there? Because we can't just make ethical decisions based on what is the most positive outcome. That's consequentialism or utilitarianism even that we could do all kinds of things to try to make the best positive outcome. For example, you could maybe set up a system where orphaned children, a small subset of them, are used for uh, child SA, and then that prevents children overall from being victims of child SA, and so the overall rate goes down. Would that be good because we had better consequences? No, because we did something grossly evil to try to get the good consequences. And it's similar, even if we have more of a shortage of things like kidneys, and we, we do need more kidneys and, and organs, it doesn't justify us doing things that are evil or exploitative, like taking organs from dead people without their consent, even though they're not alive anymore to consent. Or, sure, the using, or using money so that the people who end up doing it are the poor who are in a worse place to be to be exploited and want to go and be able to do something where they are greatly benefiting society uh, but incurring massive harms because of this kind of exploitation. Yeah, but then I think that's this doesn't have to be utilitarian. This could literally be, we could look at this as a virtue or deontologically. We're not talking about sacrificing some group of people to save another group of people, or harming some group of people to save other people. We're just talking about an individual. G giving up your kidney is, harms you. Well, I'm saying things like blood plasma. The kidney stuff obviously well, moves a little bit more. You can more, donate like, blood plasma 100 times a year. We don't have long-term studies what that does to people. It may not be healthy. <laughs> okay, but we do have long-term studies on what like blue-collar labor does to people. Sure. Is that exploitative that we allow people to get engaged in backbreaking work that leads to negative health outcomes? It might put them around asbestos. It, it, de it depends on the particular occupation. So, so occup if we were to compare like construction work to blood plasma donation, what arguments do you have to save construction work from the negative arguments you've constructed to destroy the exploitative effect of like Be, because construction work, and this goes back actually to sex work, because construction work is uh, a service that creates a good, it's a particular kind of service or skill that's offered. With blood plasma, what we are doing is we are commodifying people. And one of the overarching criticisms of pornography and prostitution, including from non-religious feminists, from the past 40 years, is that prostitution and pornography are wrong precisely because this is not a service that is offered to people. It is the purchasing of a commodity. And a simple thought experiment shows oh, wait, that. Wait, but wait, wait, let me finish the thought experiment. Okay. The simple thought experiment is that people have a choice between two streams that they want to pay for. And let's say one is Jasmine's uh, 5,000 stream, you know, special access, uh, cool stuff I'm going to do. <laughs> and the other one is Megan from Nebraska, barely 18, my very first stream. This one's going to be the far more popular one. With real jobs, people value expertise and experience. With commodities, like a car, you value that it doesn't have a lot of miles on it. And people treat pornography and prostitution and the women involved more like cars than they do like service Would workers. you say that that argument Why? also applies to every single form of athletics? No. Or because you, you value an athlete that has more experience and so they have a greater skill Hold set. Hold on, what's involved? the average age of like a female Olympic gymnast? That they have tremendous skill is the point. They have skill and experience. That but, 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 wait, 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 but what is it, isn't the, like average, five years old. Isn't the no, no. average age like 14 it's years old It's not just or age. The fact is that someone would rather prefer a uh, cam or porn or something with a girl it's my first time whereas a gymnast if it's their first time doing the uneven bars we don't prefer Only that because they're mother bad. Hold on, wait, wait. So, now we, so now we've literally so now we've narrowed this all the way down to it's just the fact that it's the first time because commodification of bodies or people are like these are things that are also happen in a wide range like somebody who's younger somebody who's got less damage especially when we talk about sports i feel like for athletics this is going to apply. I don't know how you can look at athletes and say they're not commodified under this lens. They can they can be treated inhumanly. People can be treated as commodities or inhumanly. But I'm saying that sex work. That's why I don't like that phrase. It's not even work. There's a whole host of other things that are involved. To say that we should treat, especially prostitution, like a job, to me seems insane. What about acting? What about what, do you, what about acting? It, would you say like women actresses are also treated as commodities? Because a well, woman actress might be hired. Oh, she's only twenty-two. She's like, God, how are we going to hire her to do this job instead but of? They a want her to be a good actor. They want I mean, her to. Well, she has they a want. They want her to have. I that mean, if you do porn, they skills. also want you to do whatever pornographic actions are going to do as well, right? But Trent's point is yeah. that for the first, the girl who's just doing the first time or selling her virginity or showing well, me online. Yeah, but you're you're narrowing on the hyper specific. Like, is the most popular porn star in the world eighteen years old? That's just her first time. No, that's not how it works. I think the point here is sex is different than all of these right. things. Sex has meaning. Her and word. I think well, that clearly, is now no, but, but, no, and going, going back though, talking. here's the other thing why we can't, I'll, I'll give you another example why prostitution, it can't really be called. If you consider it sex work, you'd say it's a job like other jobs that are 
not the, the most fun to do. Is that what the idea of a prostitute would be? That if under the sex work paradigm, it's a job, and there are unpleasant elements, and like other jobs, many people do it just so they want to get paid. I wouldn't say that job is necessarily unpleasant. I yeah. think everything has a aspects Pros of unpleasantness to it. Okay, well, I would say that well, you don't think prostitution is generally an unpleasant job? When you say prostitution, probably. Yes, I said prostitution, yes. I, I mean, probably and, and, in and general, so, I would imagine it's an unpleasant job. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I would imagine in general. But, but there are lots of jobs that are unpleasant, and we don't treat it like other jobs. So, for example, uh, in other jobs, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, has very strict rules when you come in contact with things like bodily fluids. So you have to wear goggles, for example. You have to wear latex gloves, a <laughs> gown. You have to minimize exposure to bodily fluids all the time. But you could never apply those OSHA standards to a prostitute who's expected to, you know, have urine and ejaculate and other things, you know, put in their face. So you, so you can't treat it like other jobs, can you? In regards to the bodily fluids thing, that probably not. Right, so it, it seems very suspicious that if we were to go in and say, okay, well, she's gonna wear these goggles and this gown and the guy, it can't just be a latex condom. That's pretty insufficient. You could spread HPV even still in the areas that are uncovered. You, you gotta wear, to, to make it a, a job covered in OSHA, you gotta wear like a big old diaper that like covers everything in latex in the midsection. And that's the only time the sex acts are gonna be allowed is if you make sure there's no physical bodily contact. Couldn't you also substitute this with like a lot of rigorous testing prior to the action? A lot of, no, because it doesn't matter. The, the OSHA regulations aren't just preventing the spread of definitely infectious uh, liquids, uh, of even potentially. It's the liquids themselves. My point is just that if well, you, wait, wait, if if you, you do it, if you had if you had prostitution as a job that actually satisfied standards for safe work apparatuses, no men wouldn't go to that. They would go to the illegal alternatives because it's not about this being a certain job. It's about acquiring a commodity in the bodies of women or men who are frankly treated I mean, like all women. All the evidence shows that when you do start treating it like a job, STD rates go down, condom use goes up. So I'm just, I don't, I don't get how. I'm saying where, where are those? Like I've heard studies that say that before, and they're often misleading. Like there was one mm -hmm. about Rhode Island, for example, that claimed like, oh well, you know, gonorrhea goes down, so it it makes prostitution legal. Except chlamydia also goes up during this time. These are often I very mean, cherry picked. They'll pick some diseases but not others to try to say that this is this is acceptable or not. But when you compare, for I example, mean, when you compare Germany, where prostitution has been legalized since 2002, and Sweden, where the Nordic well, model. Wait, wait, let's just stick on the OSHA thing, right? So fine. Well, I'm just saying well, the wait, prostitutes wait, wait, get sports. killed in Germany. They don't get killed in Sweden. Okay, for sports, don't athletes sometimes come into contact with like blood and stuff? Like if you're a boxer or if you do MMA? Right, and you minimize that and then you might- Wait, you no, have no, to no, 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 wait. They yeah. don't box in OSHA outfits, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have mm -hmm. biohazard suits on. Mm -hmm. Also, pornography is already an employment industry in the United States. It's legal. Are you telling me the, there are the no OSHA standards? The for bodily fluids that happen in mixed martial arts competitions are incidental to the act. You can get involved in M you can do an MMA match or jujitsu match or boxing and not come in contact with blood. And you definitely won't come. You know, you won't come in contact with semen. That's not going to happen. Well, wait. What's more likely to carry like different types of horrible infectious diseases? Blood versus semen? Do you know? I don't know the answer to that. I, mean, I guess I, it depends what it gets into, but the point is that well, no, even, wait, no, no, that's not the point. Hold well, on. So then I will answer. It's still in incidental. The goal in boxing and, and and MMA and things like that is not to cause abrasions and cuts. No, and if those things well, happen, it, there that are is rules. The goal. There. That is the goal. What do you mean? The you're, be, you're literally trying to beat the other person it's up. It's incidental. You don't. Have that's not to do incidental. That. Me punching them in the face, then bleeding is not incidental. Me punching them right. in the face. But it's it is different though than what is going on in a sex act where somebody is ejaculating into somebody's mouth. Sure, that's completely it can be. It can be that is good. And there's no like we would have bandages be applied in things to prevent the spread of bodily fluids in a sport, which I don't know if that falls under OSHA as much as a sport sure. different than just so a job. So here's a question. Do you think OSHA standards just don't exist for porn in the United States? They don't exist for pornography? I think even don't, despite... Wait, 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 hold on, because pornography is an employment industry in the United States. Does OSHA not I think apply it's to them? I, I believe that it's completely inconsistent how it's treated compared to other when professions. When you say inconsistent, isn't there going to be a different set of OSHA standards based on whatever the particular job is? Isn't that literally the point of OSHA is to create guidelines for safety for doing jobs and... No. I mean, if we want to go wait, back do you to... Say no? What, I didn't hear the question. That OSHA is going to have a different set of standards for different jobs. There's probably going to be different rules depending on your work environment, right? There are going to be slight variations, but the, just the basic rules of how we'd apply these different jobs and different workplace regulations and rules just cannot be applied to quote unquote sex work. Uh, going, going to prostitution in terms okay, of. Okay, wait, also, whether it's good just to answer that real quick because I don't want to hear the final word. OSHA does have standards for pornography and they do apply to pornography and they work just fine. But regardless yeah, of the, the standards that may or may not such. apply, do to what? 
to prostitutes today and, pro and, and to uh, sex workers today who are engaged in prostitution. Prostitution leads to very bad outcomes back to if you want to talk about data for prostitutes. And so I think that's something, I mean, Trent talked about the correlation obviously between the increase in human trafficking, but it's also harmful to the prostitutes themselves in addition to that. Okay, I want to really so go I through, I want to go through the data on this and, because and if I'll, we're talking about the prostitutes and I'll, I, I just themselves, want to say a couple criminalizing things about it. Well, let me just finish, Jasmine, let me just okay. finish. So I had on my show recently an uh, ex-porn um, actor named Joshua Broom, and he shared his story. He was one of the top ranked or awarded porn actors at the time, and he left the industry. He's now happily married with four kids, so his life wasn't ruined. In the end, he was able to change his life, and he's now extremely fulfilled. But he shared about how during his time in the industry, which was six or seven years, 30 of his close friends took their lives um, because of the just extreme- 30? 30 of his close friends took their lives. Were these and all porn stars? These are people involved yeah. in pornography, creating pornography. So if I look up Josh's story, he's got, there are 30 porn stars around him that killed themselves? Correct, yes. Okay. And so, that, do you, have you heard that I before? mean, I've never heard that in my life. Okay. Well, in the archive but, of women's mental health, there's a study that shows that 20% of prostitutes have suicidal ideation. And in fact, wait, how many what percentage of women already? Wait, wait, what percentage of women have suicidal? Not 20%. Percent. Isn't and it like 47% have tried like antidepressants? Pro people who have sex for money the rates of post-traumatic stress disorder among these individuals are on par with combat veterans. And think about how much suicide afflicts combat veterans. And but the statistic for that specifically though, according to this study, is that there's an increase in risk for suicide attempt of 41% versus the average of 29%, so that 10% increase for those involved in prostitution. Psychotic episodes, 41% versus 27%. HIV AIDS, 6% to 1%. Other STDs like hepatitis STDs, 11% to 2%. Emergency room visits, 44% to 34%. Okay. So the reality is, if now we're talking from the point of view of is it is sex work good or harmful, excuse me, for the prostitute, it is very well here's the problem the you're prostitute. never going to eliminate that women are going to do prostitution but we have all but the data no 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 now let me finish let me finish now no it argument. is though because you're not going to get there's always going to be people that are going to supply this and when we criminalize it or when there's we always stigmatize gonna be rapists it too, that's there's true. yeah and when we but if there was certain things that policy decisions that we could make that could decrease negative effects for these prostitutes because there's over 42 million of them according to the data that we have and the studies show that decrim and legalized location so consistent improved condom use this is a big study 2021 in the quarterly journal of economics 17 work size census at four points in time pre-crim pre -crim, post announcement uh but still pre-crim post-crim and five years post-crim not only show that std rates go down for those people but overall in there's yeah. that society Jas as well jasmine the also the cr crime rates and the mm -hmm. amount of violence perpetrated against the prostitutes both by police and by their clients goes up the more you oh, criminalize okay. the, the question that we are asking ourselves is today is sex work is sex work harmful is sex work bad and I just read data that shows that if you are involved in prostitution, you are at higher risk for suicidal ideation, for Same with STIs, being a lawyer. you're at higher <laughs> risk for um, being, and then also here's a study that talks about yeah, the higher okay, risk I for being sexually assaulted or raped. Being we, a lawyer we, we, increases your yeah. likelihood of substance abuse, increases your suicide, increases your likelihood of depression. Is being a lawyer bad? We need professionals to defend us in a courtroom. So, Men don't need professionals to have orgasms. They can do that themselves if they need it. Well said, Fred. The problem the, is- The is, point is sex work is not needed for a society the way that but it you always need is have going to be there it's always going to be there and, the, and if, if you could snap your fingers and get not a rid good of argument. it maybe i would take okay. that but we have to be Jasmine, practical me, uh, I mean, like i said in order to say if something is good or bad you have to look at what happens if you try to come in and take it that's and good. all that's, of the all of the yeah. evidence that's shows good. how many that's not even the question we're asking about how to regulate or make it illegal etc we're asking is it i would say let me just finish we're asking is it harmful right and we're saying we're showing data and explaining that it is harmful, you're saying, well, being an attorney can be harmful. The position here is, well, you don't need, we don't, a society doesn't need sex work the way that it needs Society doesn't law. need athletes. Doesn't need prostitution. The, athletes are so universally then, harmed let me just physically. Respond. And then your response to that is, well, it's inevitable there's always going to be some. Yeah, but, but, but here's, okay, so is being a lawyer bad for the so, lawyer so, itself? Okay, so my question but is, Jasmine, this, let me sex finish. Work, please let me finish. Okay, then, please then let you gotta finish. let me finish. Please let me finish. Because you always interrupt me Murder, murder is inevitable. It still happens even though it's against the law, right? Rape, sexual assault is inevitable. It still happens though it's against the law. 
the inevitability argument that something will still happen to some degree, even if it's regulated, restricted, made illegal, et cetera, yeah. isn't an argument for why it's good or bad. And our argument today that the position we're taking is that this thing is bad. So I have and a question. So you were talking about you were, no, you were talking about how, oh, it's really bad for the actual sex workers. And I'm saying, okay, being a lawyer is bad for the actual lawyer. So my question to you is if the data showed that having sex work or having porn actually led to less violence in society and like if the data showed that, then would it be good? Because you're saying we need lawyers. If having sex workers, the data did show that, would that change no, your position? No, because we shouldn't exploit people just to make society a better place. Okay, we shouldn't treat people like commodities. We shouldn't do evil so good may come. So like, I have a question about keeping prostitutes. I don't understand how that doesn't yeah. apply to athletes. I, when, it, when it comes, to, well, you're... Like for fighters, you're literally watching two people. Your analogy would. Your, How is that not commodification? No, your analogy bodies? would work if we actually had gladiatorial combat, where people used to have in ancient Rome, where somebody is going to kill another person. And let's say you you figure out, Aren't hey, you know forced? what? It turns out when we have gladiator matches, like violence goes down. It's a cathartic release when people watch them. No, I reject each the analogy. Other. We're not. I'm saying that when two Whoa, people. No. Yes, when two people. We don't. You don't need to make an analogy to my analogy. I'm saying that very clearly, two people <laughs> fighting on stage. We are commodifying their bodies. They undergo severe physical trauma. All of their health care uh, or health lifetime uh, outcomes fall dramatically, right? CTE, if, among other if things. If an athlete yeah. had the same level of trauma that a prostitute underwent, I would agree that sport should be outlawed. That's why, for example, I'm very sympathetic to regulating uh, professional football because of the rate of concussive injuries, especially among minors. So I agree with your point, but the level of harm that a prostitute undergoes is way beyond what a lawyer undergoes, even what a professional athlete undergoes. It's the mental harm on par with like a combat veteran. Sure, but or for, let me finish. Mm -hmm. Or for example, the question I had for Jasmine was since 2002, where prostitution is legal in Germany, how many prostitutes have been murdered? Do you know? I don't have that data in front of me, but I know so it's that 69. How many have been murdered in Sweden in that time? I don't know. I could do we could go study one and it was study. by a jealous ex-boyfriend because Sweden cuts the demand and makes it a bad place that even sex traffickers. So wait, hold on real quick. Like, what is the population instance? of Germany? It's much larger. It's larger. But how much could, larger? Like 10 times? How, how it's much? not 10 times larger. What is the population of Germany? I don't even know. if you control. Look, look it up. Yeah, look it up. E even if it's you at least can, five times. Larger. No, even if you control for the population differences that are involved, no sex worker has been killed by a client in Sweden since they established the Nordic model in 1993 million, by the way. <laughs> None. Okay, so it's like nine to 10 times larger than Sweden. Isn't Sweden like 9 million or something? I'm just curious. I I think, I but also, wait, 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 on this athlete thing. Okay, I'm going back to this, okay? 10 million. If you want to compare athletes to yeah. prostitutes, yes. that's not a fair comparison. We could compare street well, you, fighters. You, you did it. No, 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 hold on. You're saying that prostitutes have all these negative outcomes and athletes don't. Yeah. Athletes would be the equivalent to like a brothel that's legalized. Mm -hmm. If you want to compare prostitutes to illegal athletes, you'd look at like street fighters or something. I think that mm -hmm. the outcomes of- No, but it's the, the, the studies show the harm among prostitutes, even in places where prostitution has been legalized and pro and brothels are allowed, you still have the mental health effects. So you wait, still you have think the physical that- physical effects. You have people that have you know? anal muscles being torn yeah. out of them because they have sex with 10 guys in a night. Okay, well, so, and, so let me- and, Nobody, so let me, I'd rather and, do and, MMA and, with, with, I'd rather have Mike Tyson what? punch me in the face than do that. And the okay, case so that I brought up of Joshua Broom Listen, and his friends, yep. they were not even prostitutes, they were in the porn industry. That's awesome, okay. So it's not awesome, question, it's horrible, and that's the point. I mean, okay. suicide so the question is, because of despair connected to a lifestyle that's living out of reality of using your body and constantly abusing your body, that's the, that's the problem here. Okay, wait, wait, okay. We, if you are saying, um, I just wanna get this statement to clear. You're telling me that the outcomes for prostitutes that work in legal brothels is the same as the outcome for prostitutes that work outside in illegal areas. That they're the same? Yeah. No, that's not what he said. He no, said I'm, just, I'm just saying that, that, they they're, that they're negative. They're worse than other occupations. Okay, so then are the outcomes of prostitutes that work in brothels better than the outcome of prostitutes that work outside of we, we don't know because the you're not the, even gonna make an educated we, guess you have we, no idea we don't know because the circumstances of brothels in different countries and different regions some of them are tightly regulated and have I'm not, different no, behaviors no, no, no. i'm saying I, in I one city on in one area you're telling me that you think that prostitutes that work in legally regulated brothels have the same outcomes as prostitutes no, that work I, I have they have the same out they have different degrees different degrees of outcomes probably one might be more likely to have substance abuse than the other but it's no. still that's higher. Point. It's still yeah. higher than the general population. 
Okay, but you so, do not, if, when it comes to data, you guys are not like, a, this is associations between sex work laws and sex workers' health, a systematic review and meta-analysis of quantitative and qualitative studies demonstrate sex workers who have exposed to reg repressive policing, including the Nordic model, were significantly more likely to experience violence from clients and others. There's a lot of studies that show this. The Nordic model increases violence. That's not true. In the, in the, Nor in the Nordic model, for example, it showed that certain acts of violence increase, like hair pulling or slapping, but other acts of violence, like rape, actually drop by 50%. Drug use is more frequently reported reported in studies from criminalized and partially criminalized settings, which would be the Nordic model. A study explicitly comparing health service access between decriminalized, legalized, and criminalized settings experienced the poorest health and uh, safety outcomes with greater investment in health promotion prog programs and occupational health and safety measures in decriminalized and regulated settings. So you guys do not win the data war on if criminalizing sex work. We're not talking about criminalization. Yeah, we're, we're talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about, about whether it's The Nordic bad. model is better then than... I'll give you okay. another study. The Nordic model is not two, better in two, decrim two, when it comes to outcomes to sex work. You cannot argue that the Nordic model is helping sex workers more than decrypt. A, a right? 2003 study by Farley et al. in seven countries showed that 89% of prostitutes want to quit their job but can't because of financial reasons. Same, Do you I bet if you look at j like janitors and, and people who scrub toilets. Do you have any data on that? That they, that they don't want to work? I, I can probably find something. Do you think it, what the job then, satisfaction is Then let me, then let me put for, it this way. Is it bad that... So if somebody wants to stop doing something and they can't so it sounds like we have women the majority of them want to stop having sex with men but they can't it sounds like we're facilitating rape on a mass scale then i don't think that's rape right i'm not saying that there are prostitutes Even if someone is no no no, no. if they someone's a prostitute who feels like they need to do this for money and they can't quit because they need that money and a man comes and pays to have sex with them you don't think their consent has been infringed? No, I think that, yes, sex workers, I'm sure a lot of prostitutes would rather be rock stars, okay? That's not the point. Are they consenting? The point, are they fully yes, consenting? Yes, they're consenting, just like somebody who doesn't want to make you a sandwich, but doesn't have a choice is going to so, make you so a sandwich. So when a Hollywood actress consents to the executive producer having sex with them because she's worried about losing the role, that's not rape? That's completely different because she, in, with sex work, Why? you are saying, hey, this is my job. I will have sex with you if you pay me. How, what do you? So what? How is that? It's because these women don't. It's not voluntary. Why like, well, I, I'd rather I'd rather go somewhere else and make money. Wait, they feel like they they're sex yeah. because they can't get employment there anywhere else, or because they workers. or because they have previous sex. Sorry, previous prostitution and drug convictions prevent them from getting other and game, trauma. You other can get gainful a job at employment. King if you were a prostitute, you can get a, you can get a job in a lot of places if you have a felony conviction. That's why decrim is yeah. really great because in New Zealand, where they did that, the Criminals Records Clean Slate Act of 2004, sex workers can have past prostitution related offenses expunged from their records. No places where going going back to my example with the executive producer and the actress. Would you say that consent is something you can't fully have if the person you're having sex with controls whether you're paid or not? No, you can't consent. You don't are consenting there because you didn't consent to that arrangement. What if she when went into become, it expecting that to happen? If you went into it consenting to it to happen, then fine. Yeah. But that's well, it's often expected. And no, no hold on, no, hold on. No, 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 something no. being <laughs> expected and something being expected are two completely different things. Well, what if they went in there and they said, "This is part of what I want to do." If that, if it ahead. said on your contract, you can write this, you can do that, blah blah blah, and you also have sex with this guy, then that's no, a lot so different. So you think it's okay it's not for a, a boss job. to Let's have sex with a secretary, or not, not even a boss? You're not even a boss. Intuition loading so hard. No, I'm not. I'm asking a secretary because. Secretaries, you're dodging a question with. No, hold on. With, I'm not dodging with, a question. With Secretaries talking over don't me, sign Destiny. up. You're not, to have you're not sex listening to what I'm saying. Bosses. I didn't even ask the question. I didn't even get through to the question because you. you we could okay. pick another <laughs> example, like an audition it's, where you're not currently employed, and the director says, "Yeah, I want to get you in this movie, but you know, I, I got to see if you really look the parts. You know, if you can really pull off these sex scenes." And so she's not employed yet but she would really like to get this job and really needs it. There's certainly coercion, and we would say that that's, no. that's rape right If there. everything is broadcast out in the open, and no. it's like part they of the thing, they have to share it publicly, then it's, you, can say, you can say that it's scummy or it feels wrong or whatever, but is it coercion? No, you're walking into there, you're accepting the job, and you're saying, okay, fuck it, I'll do it. Like, if that's something that comes like at the end of the process, like, oh, by the way, you gotta fuck me. Oh, by the way, you gotta do this. Then yeah, you can say that's coercive. So, in the, so you think it's acceptable for a boss to um, make a move on a employee provided the employee consents and is like fine. during Says the, that like during the, inter like no. during the interview process why would that be wrong 
do you, I can explain consent to you, if you I guess because you're religious, you don't understand it. So the reason why it's wrong is because consent can't be negotiated between parties that have power over you. But what if you went not, in there with the analysis that this might end up happening? Yeah. No, in this might no, end you, up happening is not. This is part contractual. We, we what understand. I do. We understand consent. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. You, I gotta, because I'll, you're I'll used explain, to be, you're polyamorous, you don't understand the dangers of consent. I have to explain. I have to explain. And now we've seen what's happened from that. I have to explain. Okay. No, you went after us. I'll go after you. No, no, hold on. You're asking me why can an employee not consent to having sex with a boss? Mm -hmm. The reason why you can't do that is because you cannot determine if consent exists there because you don't know because if the employee being paid? says, "Let me finish." Because you don't understand the topic, so let me finish, okay? That, the employee Jesse, doesn't know. The employee it. then stop trying to cut me off. I'm trying to explain something. The employee cannot consent because the employee doesn't know if they say no if they're going to get fired. That's why you can't have consent between people over power. But if the job says you have to do X, Y, and Z, and Z is having sex, that's not the same type of consent as in the middle of a non-sexual job, your boss is trying to get you to have sex but with But to Trent's scenario, if you're going into this and it's a scene that involves sex scenes, and the boss says this is what, something we're going to do to practice the sex scene, would you consider that a problem? If it's advertised as part of the job, then no. Yeah. If it's sprung on you and you weren't expecting it, then yes. Sounds like Harvey Weinstein so, should have just been more forthright then. Yes, yeah. unironically, yes. <laughs> Let's, that, we, yeah, can, that we can compare well, podcasts. Okay. We can compare <laughs> yeah. podcasts to the podcast world. If there was a podcast and the guy it brought on women, yeah, there, and, and the guy smart. brought on women, no, that was the problem. The issue, if there, was a, if, there was a, if there was a movie studio and the studio says, we've got a producer and he'll make movies, but you gotta fuck him to do it, would that be scummy? Yeah, of course. Would it be kind of like slimy, maybe unethical, or kind of weird or whatever? Sure, but would it be like non-consensual? No, you're you're signing up for it. You literally are saying, "Okay, I'll go and well, I'll do this." Well, what's making it scummy and bad? I'm sure it's injuring consent in some way. I think way. it's scummy because like a guy having sex with women in order to like get them jobs is kind of it's like a scummy, scummy thing. But it's a lot. That's it's not, not a reason. That's just an opinion. It is. That's what scummy is. Scummy is an opinion. It's also I, I scummy if you said you have to scrub my so toilet. So you get to, to get say that job. that sex act is bad because it makes you feel bad. I didn't say it was bad. I said it was scummy. Yeah. So is that a, is that a term of a negative moral evaluation? It's like a it's like a moral non cognitivist position of like this act. Ew. That's just like yeah. It's not like a it's not like a strong statement on if it's unethical. But we can say non consensual. But you seem to have a problem with it. I don't know if you have a problem. It's just scummy. Just like if someone said, "Oh, you have to scrub my toilets in order to get this job," and or if you go to like Thanksgiving in order to get this job, that has nothing to do with sure. sex, but it's still really scummy. Or like family members, and it's not pressure. acceptable, and it has like nothing to do with sex. They're Having both sex no, they're like both exploitative. <laughs> that's exploitative of cheap labor that's un, you know not related to an acting role, and the other is sexual exploitation. All forms of all forms of labor are exploitative. Nobody would work if they didn't have to. And I thought you that's, weren't a communist. No, but using your true. definition, all forms of labor are exploitative. Nobody, no, nobody labor, wants to be a janitor. Nobody wants to work at McDonald's. Nobody wants to, people. yeah. No one wants I, to make you a sandwich at Subway. Like it's, it's all exploitative, right? If those people had other alternatives, they wouldn't do it. No, I think and that, a lot of people I think who that there's no ability choose no. it because it's the best I think option the that they have. When you work at McDonald's or even if you work as a janitor, there's tremendous dignity and honor in that work. To you. Yeah, you, uh, what, no, to what them, you do is something them, Jasmine, you're proud of that you can even, a janitor can bring their kids and say, hey, look at this. Timmy, it's all clean and great. Your old man did a good job. I doubt you'd want to bring your kids to bring your kids to work day for you. I don't have kids. But if you did, I doubt they would. You'd do bring your kids to work I, day if for I your was, job. If I ran a casino or if I ran a bar and there were drunk people everywhere, I wouldn't take my kid into the bar with me either. That doesn't mean me being a bartender no. or me running you, a bar. If you run a bar immoral. that has a bunch of drunk people, you're actually doing something wrong. Bartenders should not facilitate open drunkenness on their property, even a casino. That's something that's fine. But I, I think that this I mean, is that's, very. That's, this is just, once again, sex work is is not work. It's not. And it's not good. And I, I mean, if you're I an obstetrician or a gynecologist, would you want to bring your kids to work to show all the vagina? <laughs> no, because, because those are sexual organs that have that because they're sexual so organs. You, you should job? Keep, no, you should just keep sex away from kids. And you might show if them you, the if hospital. You, if you run a dispensary, should you bring your kids in? No one's doing anything wrong. We're just buying weed. It's legal. Is that something you want to bring your kids into? That's not necessarily wrong. I think you can treat. Uh, it, I, it would depend on this. However, I think that if you are concerned about a child adopting a behavior that could be destructive to them, whether it's alcohol or marijuana, then you might not show that to them. But I think that shows that it's not great for your position, that there is something destructive in some way about pornography and prostitution. You wouldn't want to bring your kids to see it. There's well, something I, damaging I think about the it. other thing that's just so sad about the conversation is we're, we're you know, getting down into these different cases of how horrible these different things are by degrees. And I think the, que the reality is sex is a good thing. Sex is a beautiful thing. Sex is an amazing thing. And the problem, the fundamental issue that Trent and I have been proposing here about sex work being harmful. Would you bring your eight-year-old to say you have sex with your husband? Just to let me finish. It commoditizes it. 
it objectifies the people involved. It takes sex out of the context where sex belongs, which is in love. And I believe okay, in marriage. You, you said this like yeah. Times. So but my point is that okay, you just said that bringing your child to work can, because sex work is bad. Would you bring your child in while you and your husband have sex? Of course not. For the but same sex, reason, no. the same reason we wouldn't bring you guys there. Sex work is bad. But that's because, because you just said that sex work not is bad. Me and my child, you said the reason that it's bad is because I wouldn't bring my kid in to watch me have sex. You wouldn't bring your kid in to watch you have sex in this great, loving, wonderful, proper use of sex either. That doesn't mean that I'm not doing work when I'm having sex with my husband. I'm expressing love. I'm not being paid by him i'm expressing so, love so then why Wait, won't why won't you bring your child in there because it sex is private between two people oh. that's how it's designed and that's what it should be <laughs> i mean they're and that's be- oh, that's fuck. one of the reasons why pornography is so harmful and one of the reasons why sex because because uh, we can confidently say you tell your exposing ch- children to sex is bad but it just is because that's, they're, they're that's something their brains are not prepared even to marital in the right sex context. though even exposing yes, them because to marital, marital sex, sex belongs between the people not so on the porn I don't think it's a good argument yeah, to say that because the children the can't come with you to your porn site children can't come no, with you into your bedroom of, either the point of asking that question and Trent going along that line of reasoning was to show there is a difference between the work of the noble work right. of being a janitor and I would say to look down on people who work in a fast food restaurant or look down on a janitor to say that they just want to get out of the job it's a horrible job yeah there are difficulties but to say it's a horrible job there's nobility to that work there is not nobility to selling your uh, your See, body to is, someone this else this is to just putting off your to. morals on there's no, this is noble this there is, is not morality noble. around sex you. there's morality around sex and you would even agree with that you would even agree that there is some morality around sex would is you not there? what do you mean yeah of course there's some morality, the morality there's some morality it? around beyond, janitors beyond there's consent. some morality to being a fast food worker right you have to there's certain regulations so far the only morality i've been able to ascertain from both of you is that there should be consent between two adults. Is that the only morality that you believe exists around sex? That's a huge starting point, yes. Is that the only morality that you believe exists around sex? I, I can't answer yes to that because I'm sure we can think of some exceptions where there might be some other qualifier. Well, you thought about it a yes. lot, clearly, and we're at this debate. Well, yeah, but so. if you're going to ask me a hypothetical of like, what if when you have sex with somebody, it causes the fusion of two atoms and a hydrogen bond explodes? I, I, I don't know. Ask, in, tra- in general, I think, most, general, general, most, yes. I think most morality is going to be built around a reciprocation about, of consensual <laughs> respect for other people. Okay, yes. so, How about consensual incest among adults? How, if you want to do it, if you have a really hot sister, then go for it. And there's yeah, no okay. harm yeah, there you go. if you're not reproducing. I have a question related to that. So incest is okay. I got a question. And bestiality is okay. Ryan, point speaking of incest. I didn't say bestiality is okay. I don't incest. think we should be doing any of those harm to animals. Got, if an animal's consenting, then bestiality is okay, but I don't think an animal huh? can I think I would Wait, rather live in a world. I think, is I think, okay. I think if they, if, bestiality is no okay. Way, there's what? no way for the animal to consent, just like there's no way for a child to consent. Trent was trying to be like, oh, but we do all these other experiments with animals. We shouldn't do that. I think, and you said, oh, which one's worse? Can, can, it depends. It depends. Some of the experiments we do to animals are horrible. Can like, we I, literally can I play, take out their ovaries. We do can all I this play fucked frisbee up with shit. a dog? I would rather, I would rather if I was, you know, I think sometimes even having sex with animals is better than some of the shit we do to animals, like moving their ovaries around, killing them, literally killing them in order to Doug, get so, a so, dog consent to being trained. What? Does a dog consent wait, to being potty trained? Wait a minute. Are, are you're you saying that you're saying that consent? you're saying that Hold sex on, with animals is not as bad wait, wait. as killing them? What do you mean? I Did you just say that killing them is worse? I think killing animals is. I don't, it depends, right? It depends wait, what you think. Say of, that one more time. What do you want me to say? Just the way you said it. Wait, like what? Did you say killing animals is worse than? No, sex I'm with saying them? sometimes the experience. I think wait, you we can bite the bullet. Yes, I think probably generally, yeah. Why? What's the next question? How could you possibly flip that? Do you disagree? Do you yeah. think that so, having sex with an animal is I, is worse I, than what, killing? We're, yes, we're yes, it is worse. Because, for who? For because who? Because animals for are who? non-rational beings that we can eat. There's nothing immoral about that. Sex is for human beings. And okay, I'm wait, sorry, wait, so you, you guys think, so just you can't see that. So you think the sex? Because we're not religious. So you think it's that the sex? Religion. No, you're not it's sane. About, you're an insane sure. person. So wait, who is the sex worse for versus the killing worse for? Are you just looking at the perspective of the human and not the animal at all, or? Who is it? No, I'm talking about it's, the act. You're reframing it as it, what causes more or less harm. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about the You said act. sex for an animal is worse than killing the animal. I'm asking you it's worse for who? It's not just for an animal, I think. I'm it's asking worse. I'm who is worse. the act of killing an animal is, sorry, the act of sex with an animal is morally worse than the act of killing the animal. Well, so the, an and animal the only thing that has wrong, any apparently. moral perspective in your eyes would be the human. Yes, because you, not the only thing. There are ways to treat animals that are immoral, like animal torture. Like killing them? The, is it is it immoral? It can be immoral to kill an animal if you're doing it for a in cruel an, for a cruel way. purpose or an inhumane way. Cruel if, in whose judgment? No. Let's say you're st- if you're stuck on a desert <laughs> island 
And there's let's a say that we're in I would California like to I would like to finish. Oh if you're God. stuck on a desert island and you, I we're was not just talking about stuck on a desert island. It's very obvious. Like you're killing an animal to eat it for burgers because it tastes good and it feels good. No, the, here's the example. Okay. If I, you kill, if you're stuck on a desert island and you find a wild pig there and you kill it to eat, that's not morally wrong. If be, because you want to satisfy hunger. If you're on the island and it turns out you're just horny and you use the pig to satisfy that, yes, that is morally worse. Is it morally because, worse if you just hunt to kill an animal just for fun? Is morally worse is than it, what? Then is it morally worse to kill an animal because you just want to hunt for fun than? Have, yeah, two people go into the yeah, forest. One so, guy's hunting with a spear. One guy's hunting with his dick. Who's more immoral there? <laughs> the guy that stabs the pig and kills it. The guy that runs the animal and fucks is, it. Is, it. is he going to kill? Which it one is more immoral? Our, well, if his dick is big enough, maybe. But I'm position. asking. No, I want an answer. I want an answer. What's more? Unethical. The guy hunting with a spear. Or the guy hunting with a dick. Why is the guy that throws the spear? He's more ethical to kill the animal than leave it the is rock. Yeah, the guy that it is more gravely, de much more gravely depraved yeah. to have sex with an animal so, than to kill it in a slightly right. more depraved. Just to clarify the question. Our, okay. And the reason yeah. for that. And the reason for that is what? The reason for that is that you want to eat okay. the animal. Yeah. Our, our, yeah. Position yeah. Yeah. That, our position is that our position is that sex. That's what this view leads to. Our position is that sex with animals is always wrong. My understanding of your position is that it's only potentially wrong because the animal can't. Oh, you know, it depends. I asked you, can your dog, is your, does your dog consent when you train him to uh, use the, go, go to the bathroom Not outside? any more than your child consents to it. Okay. So you're saying that you can train your, the dog doesn't consent to some things. The dog, you're, you're saying the dog is a child and that's why it's wrong to have sex with the dog. I'm saying, the, that's your I'm position. saying that if we're talking about consent the way we know it, informed consent, I don't think there's can, any evidence to show that a, a dog can give you right. informed consent. Can, can but that, but so, I, no, back to my other example. Can kids work for the police? Can kids work for the police? Kids can't work in general. No. Can dogs work for the police? Yes. Okay, so it seems like it's a difference there. You can place them in a dangerous, life-threatening situation for the common good of society, and we see nothing immoral about that. What's wrong with sex with them? They don't consent to work with the work. Yeah, they, the they, if they can't consent to sex, they can't consent to work for the cops, but we see they can work for the cops, so why can't they do the lesser harm? What's the lesser harm? Sex Having with them. sex because they could die in their jobs in the police force. I... I mean, if, if there was some evidence out that dogs working for police officers and stuff was like really bad, like that's the thing with animals. It's really because we don't know what they're able, what they understand, what's good for them, what's not good for them. If there was evidence that working for police officers was really causing a lot of harm to dogs, then I would say that's bad. We shouldn't so, have so them. So you need a officers. social, uh, you need a scientific paper to tell you whether it's good for animals for people to have sex I with I just them. said it's not, I never said that it's good for, Let's I just said that, I just said that there's a lot of fucked up shit. You said, oh, well, there's all this Let's fucked say, up shit we do to animals. We should do, we, why not have sex with them? I'm saying we shouldn't do any of the fucked up shit to animals. That's my position. What's inconsistent about that? No, uh, Let's what? say hypothetically, there's a small handful of dogs who die in the line of duty. They're just like the most dangerous job is logging. Should humans not be able to, to but, log? But the no, point of where we're, the point, the question here is, why is it okay to employ a dog without their consent? But to your okay, point, wait. consent is important. My when it comes to point sex. is that we shouldn't be doing why is, a lot of harm to animals. Because I never said that having sex Jasmine, with them is okay. Jasmine, I also said that testing on them. I'm testing the limits of your moral belief. And what I'm saying is, you, you're saying it's okay for dogs to work. What is your? What are you saying provided? that I disagree with? What can are you I, saying that I, I disagree with? My, my I just question. don't understand what you're saying. Can I finish I my question? You're saying that it's okay for a dog to work for the police, even if there's maybe a teeny bit of harm, but largely speaking, you don't want them to be harmed, but it's okay for a dog to work for the police, but it's not okay for a dog to do sex work for, an, for a human being. Yeah. Because they don't consent for sex work. I, they don't consent all about for work to the police, so why would it, why is it it's not, all not about okay what? with sex work? It's not all about what? So you're saying that because we allow dogs to work I'm for the police. I'm asking you a question. I'm looking my, for an my position is this. I'm if trying to understand any, your moral If compass. there is any th action that we're doing, especially if it's not producing a good to society, because I think that you does think have to. You think that sex work produces a tremendous good. You keep talking about how good it is. Yeah. So if, I don't let's think. Let's say that there are people that enjoy sex with animals, and there are people who enjoy sex with animals. Yes. And your argument so far is we don't, it's not okay. We don't need. We do, let me we, just finish. It's not okay because the dog doesn't consent. The dog can, does not consent to work for the police. Why is it not okay for a dog to do sex work? Because I think that when you're talking about working for the police, those dogs actually their lives are better a lot of times. What if they're they doing? What if they're treated if, like if, a king if, in their sex work if, job? If no, Why that's the thing. If I had any evidence that having sex with these dogs is something these dogs enjoyed and liked, I would say it's fine. I don't know. Dog dogs seem to get pretty. <laughs> yeah. They seem to get fine. pretty humpy about yeah, things. Yeah, that's I don't the know. thing. I'm, I care about the harm to the animal. So, that so is my position. What if the dog, my position what if is the about dog harm is able to, to orgasm. The 
if the do- adult yes if with if a, this a is my qu- this is my thing if we can show that there is a harm to the animal being done then i would say it's bad this is my position if we can show that there is no harm or that the dog enjoys it or that the dog is better off if yeah. we could show that that was what's going on with bestiality so you are okay with fine. bestiality as long as it appears that the animal enjoys i didn't it. say it appears that's the problem is as, that as long as the animal orgasms i didn't say that either well, what then? How, then how I do don't we, think right now. That's why I said I don't believe dog, it. I don't think we should do bestiality right now because we have no way of knowing. I don't think orgasm because people orgasm when officer. they get raped too. That's does not the, a good way to determine whether his work something. For the police officer. In general, it seems that he does. If we're looking at it what seems that it, he does. It, in general, when we're looking at when we're looking at what is a dog like, what what things can a dog have that makes it seem like their life is better? And if we there was any way to show that if you fuck them all the time and they're enjoying it and it's making their lives better, I would say go for it. It doesn't have to. Well, it doesn't have to be penetrative. Bestiality, we understand the immorality of it, even things of, you know, when the dog um, arouses a person's genitals, things like that. And I'm not pulling this out of thin air. Like I said earlier, mm-hmm. there, Peter Singer, a famous philosopher, was sharing this and defending it on his Twitter. He's a world yeah. famous philosopher. This is not, and when you search for this stuff, you find it everywhere. Yeah. You, people might say, oh, it's a, why are you bringing up this fringe thing? Why this fringe thing? Well, look, uh, homosexual pornography was probably fringe 80 and, years and, ago. And the reason, another reason why consent is such a, um, is such a weak foundation for sexual morality as its whole, whole, you know, saying, oh, as long as there's consent, we're good, is you can chip away at it from every other angle, too. And with animals, we just went through this exercise, but you can chip away at it for children. I mean, we've drawn this line, 18, 17, 16. Do you have any for arguments for consent. a- adult consenting <laughs> adults, or is it all children and animals that you have to go to? Well, but, what, what is, we've, what I've made the, arguments several times, and you, no, what is, said, you said it again about why sex is not just about consent sex is about so much more than consent sex is about okay. love sex is about intimacy and sex is about the potential to bring life into the world so but that's for What's you your argument that's for, why for that, you that's for how sex is designed jasmine whether if, you if, like if it or not if that was the way it's designed and that's the way it's supposed to work then even we wouldn't all destiny be deviating away from earlier i said even that destiny admitted this earlier saying that that's the design of sex even no, if it's a design of sex, sex inevitably can bring about emotional connected of course it can bring feelings. about that but it doesn't inevitably also it can it can i agree that it can but it doesn't have to it's designed but it that. doesn't have to if this was the yeah, design you can, then there you wouldn't can... be so many people that want to deviate from it and do deviate yeah. from it. if this was just a design right we didn't just malfunction and decide actually i don't want this this isn't working out for yeah. me let me try these other forms if this was the way it's designed right mm-hmm. food is designed to for us to eat we don't you know use it any other way the reason we use sex no. that, that's that, like that, saying we, on, we, our bodies are designed for example to I have mean... a certain <laughs> amount of salt and sugar probably uh, but think about it. Tons of people eat way more salt and sugar yeah. than their bodies were designed to handle because we live in a time when salt and sugar and fat, we have an unlimited access to it that we didn't have for thousands of so years. So is it bad? It's too bad. much of it is it's, bad it, for yeah. you. Are yeah. processed, and I would say are donuts would, bad? And I, in in, in eat, too much, in excess, yeah. Eat, and I think pornography, if you use it in a way that impacts your life, then you shouldn't do it. Porn, if you're Catholic, you probably shouldn't watch porn. The results no. seem and pretty bad. Care, and if you care but about your that partner, doesn't mean, you shouldn't. That doesn't mean that porn is bad. <laughs> Just like the donut and the bag of chips is not bad because in moderation, yeah. it doesn't seem we're, to have these effects. Where Same thing with porn. Yeah. Where, where there's less than 5% of people that even report having these problems, and a lot of them tend to be religious, and moral incongruence is the number one predictor of having these issues those people yeah. shouldn't use it doesn't make yeah, the actual yeah. thing bad right. yeah i don't yeah. think it's yeah. about yeah. being just, religious just, per se or not i think it's about human that has nature. a huge but that has a huge I think impact it has on an it. impact because typically religious if that's human pe- nature then how come Jasmine. such a Jasmine, small Jasmine, percentage of people have an issue with Jasmine, Jasmine, porn let me finish. Porn. Jasmine, typically Jasmine, people let finish, typically <laughs> people who are religious try to ascertain and live by a certain moral code that's more than just make sure there's consent Okay. And so that's where you seem to have a rub and you're just saying, well, they're just religious. No, they're people that have taken the time to understand themselves and try to understand others to say more than consent is what's good for me, you and society. The position of yeah, Trent and I, 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 I would have this position even without being Catholic. Same. And before I became but my, Catholic, religious. my question this position. is this: my question is so this: if the vast position. majority of people so can I have, think, actually, probably less people than when you look at porn, can enjoy processed foods, can enjoy all this in moderation, it doesn't affect. But the vast, vast no, no, no. majority of people are consuming porn, and you can't show but, me but where it harms the them. Right and the ma- you know why? And Let the me explain. Har- because you think sex no. is is beautiful and between two people, but that's not an answer. I want to know what the outcomes are. If the majority of people, spend a lot of time. Yeah, and we actually, I have, we could spend a lot more. You actually made our point that r- people do they they're not dying from processed foods but if you look at the average american who's eating them 
they're really suffering from a lot of things, so negative health rates. They're not dying. Much the same way to say that pornography and prostitution is bad for society, it doesn't have to make you a debilitated wreck that can't do anything. You're just less healthy when it comes to sexual but, interactions wait, wait, wait. with Why? other people. So the average porn watcher is less healthy in what ways? Like, where are you getting this? Well, where, how are they the less healthy? Well, there was a study of the 22 studies that showed that About, there's an increase in aggression for younger people who And porn. I have a study that there's shows the opposite. There's a study that shows that 20% of all relationships consider a point of conflict the porn use of one of the partners and we, if 20 percent of relationships of so the they, prostitutes involved in the prostitution no. industry and the harm or, that they are the or if, if, if i my showed friend you evidence who's 20 in the other of 30 way, of his friends committed suicide that is a psychotic working in the, like working in the i don't industry. even know like i've never heard of someone who has 30 if 30 of your friends in any industry commit suicide i don't know who you're it sounds with. like a very broken industry and that's unfortunately I the pornography industry today or I do. he was a secret russian assassin <laughs> I do need to uh, read a couple chats, and I think we have to wrap up here pretty soon. So we had a uh, chat here from Legate Jr. Hey, thank you. Thank you, man. For Team DGEN, if the number of people identifying as sex workers increased by 5% every year for the next decade, would you say that we would be dealing with a social contagion? <laughs> would sex work still be good or at least not bad? Chud Nation for life. So, I mean, there's been actually a middle class t shift into sex work. Like, I think I, even I'm like an example of this, except even I'm like there now that it's become safer and it's become more accessible, more people are doing it. And I'm not seeing that causing more harm in any way. If you look at I, I don't see any data showing that since the proliferation of porn, especially since OnlyFans, that it has led to any negative outcomes other than like uh, podcasts like this that no, you I, know, bring a lot of us I, on. I, I think <laughs> that as more people enter the sexual marketplace, so while OnlyFans, you say like it's safer. Yeah. You're not you're not directly under the thumb of a pimp or something like that. But as more people enter the camming market, there is a pressure there similar to what we see among YouTube content <laughs> creators that you have to do more uh, outrageous things to get attention because there's more people in the marketplace vying for that attention. And so there's a pressure not made from a pimp, but the pressure of other people on the marketplace to do more sex acts that, that are uncomfortable. You talked about this yourself, Jasmine. I'm one of your interviews that you had. Fairly recently, you talked about how you're asked to do these scripts that seem odd and that involve a step I said sibling. They seem, and, but that's that was and from the beginning to too. And actually, things, I do less of those things. But now. you're being you've been asked. You don't. And you're there's being asked no to do evidence that people that want to join OnlyFans are now feeling pressured to do. Because let me tell you, as someone who's a very successful OnlyFans creator that started from nothing, the goal is just exposure, getting on different social media, and getting lucky. It's not like, oh, here's a video of me. The most popular OnlyFans creators aren't super popular because they're like, hey, watch me have sex with a horse now, and that's what made me super well, popular. I think, I think no, what makes, them, not, what makes them popular is still things like, you know, being able to insert an entire fist in the anus. I have, I'm a to top 0.01% OnlyFans oh. creator. I have never done anything like that. Is I Amaranth the top OnlyFans creator? Do you <laughs> yeah, know? She is. Amaranth, my, Am, I think Amaranth, I don't, I could be wrong. I don't look like her shit. She hasn't even shown a nipple, has she? A lot of the top OnlyFans creators are actually just do solo work. Nothing that crazy. I have yeah. never done anything that crazy. Do I am people do that? I'm sure some, I'm sure do, some yeah. people do, but well, I don't think there's any any correlation between those people being. In Wait, fact, the most successful you, people on OnlyFans do the most have vanilla you ever, shit. Do you do you expand your anus for clients because it's something they get off on seeing? They ask me, oh. I say no, all the time. Mm -hmm. Especially like, as they I ask make you more all and more. The time is the so point. You, so you're on your YouTube channel that you do that? <laughs> and that I want spread my anus. Yeah. I mean, I can spread it, but for instance, a lot of people ask me to do butt plugs, toys. I have never in my life done that. And that's Jasmine, not because you're in I don't a think it's a moral. Position. I understand Jasmine, I'm in a privileged there position. There are many girls that don't necessarily have the When you say the it's platform. the more popular thing there's to do, girls. though, and none of the popular Jasmine. OnlyFans creators do it, then I don't understand there's, how this there's is many, thing. There's many women and girls and men and boys involved in trafficking, certainly pornography, Maybe not. It's some so hard to do fans, trafficking on OnlyFans. You literally have to have a bank account finish, in your Jasmine, name. Can I finish? And they are uh, exposed to and exploited to very degrading act actions and activities. And so that's the that's the point that we're making is that there is an appetite for that, and oh, these things it. create and, and have. And that's why met OnlyFans is so it. great because you are in complete control of what you say to do and not do. And when you look at the most successful OnlyFans creators, they are not the ones doing these most intense things. And, and look and at them; they're actually on a lot of them are, are not successful. Vanilla. I understand that, but, but I don't still think there's try any to be, link. And they, and they I don't think there's any link. Fear that they can't have a career yes, in the future. Yes, and so certain things like even the Nordic model has led to people being like. Like I don't have time. I can't negotiate now my circumstances because it's it's basically yeah, criminalized. Yeah, I think you're living in a in a bubble of unreality. You are one you of the very sim you are one of the very few OF creators that can largely call the shots. And many women, though involved in exploitive sex work, involved in both in this country and internationally, here. are not Jasmine's in your position. Jasmine's the shot Jasmine. caller. There you have it. Here we got two more chats, and we do got to wrap up here pretty soon. We have 
Dog shite poster 69. If people need to use artificial devices to prevent <laughs> pregnancy, condoms, pills, etc., then obvious sex is primarily designed for reproduction. Okay. okay, there's a comment there. And then we finally have, pulling it up here in just a moment, we have Ibn Pro is forcing an electrician to wire your house at gunpoint equally as bad as forcing a uh, S worker to sleep with you at gunpoint. Why? Why not? And we'll this will be our final thing. I, I think we'll... I think um, a criminal code would say it is worse uh, forcing someone uh, to you know to do something. I think, for example, that we have an entire category of sex crimes. We don't have eating crimes. We're not breathing crimes. The fact that we have sex crimes that a rape that is done when someone is unconscious and they don't they don't it doesn't cause pain is treated worse in the law than maybe simple assault that does cause pain to a person. Because sex is just a very, very different thing than, any, than anything else. Well, and it's the same reason why if you tap someone on the shoulder in the workplace, that might be seen as a normal activity. Hello, are you there? If you tap someone on the crotch, it's sexual assault. There's something clearly different about sex and, and using your body for sex and then other things like you know, electrical wiring or whatever mm -hmm. it is. We have... Aaron Martinez here, fake lawyer. Maybe now you are refusing the crazy, degrading stuff. But as you hit the wall, <laughs> as you hit the wall, and it's coming fast, and your money stream runs dry, you will. I don't think so. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I make seven figures a year. How if I was in, oh, if seven. I was two seven. years, oh, seven you're seven only two years, years in. Yeah, and I've made help. more money than I could have made in a decade in law. So I probably, what's more likely, is I'll retire by the time I hit the wall, and I'll live out my life. Like, and I know I get it. I'm privileged, but this is always just like a dumb. I mean, argument. again, the, the argument. The, the argument. That I should the be question, working as a lawyer for 50 years, but this no, I only the, have a few the, years. The that's like saying professional athletes no, when they hit the wall. That's not the happens. argument about what you should do, at whether you choose between how much money you make as an attorney or an OF. The question is: Is sex work good for society or bad for society? I don't think there's any evidence. And that it's you bad. just said you're very privileged. Your case is extremely unique. Yeah, but that so was to, that to, was so that was again, at me. I know. So again, living in on the reality of that, there are many, 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 many other women and children and even boys and men who are experiencing not what you're experiencing, experiencing that. what the statistics bear out in the pain of both prostitution and pornography. But that's the thing. There are a lot of people who choose sex work because it's the best option for them and they don't want to do those other jobs. Well, the majority of sex workers, they're doing sex work because they don't want to work another job or they don't have access to another job. Taking this away from them that's, is not going to be And that helpful. was the case of my friend Joshua Broom. He wasn't able to get the jobs he was looking for in Hollywood and so he got sucked into the porn industry. That's a tragedy, not a success story. Uh, of course, I would rather have everyone who's doing porn to be as lucky as me and that's what they want to do. But the reality is people take jobs that they can get. People always take the best job that they can get and for some people that is sex work yeah. just no. like for some a lot, people a lot of a lot, a lot of okay. people a lot of people would beg then that that have the sex is, i thought you said joshua bloom was a success story <laughs> No, the point was he wasn't successful in Hollywood. You said a, you said a tragedy, not a success story. It sounds like a success no, story. He, Doesn't the, he have a family? He's happily he, married. After he, he left the porn industry, he almost killed himself while staying in the porn industry. What if he wouldn't have gone to Germany? He would have actually killed himself. Which one do you think was better? I mean, I'm glad he left and he lived. No, no. Let's say that he would have killed himself because he couldn't find jobs or he became homeless no, and no, a no, drug addict. No, no, no. You misunderstand his story. Well, no, I'm not misunderstanding. You I'm do asking. Misunderstand no, his story. Story. You misunderstand see, his story. Question. Joshua Broom. If he had a chance, if the porn industry, he struggled to make it as an actor in Hollywood. I know you said it seven times now. I know thirty of his friends killed themselves. I know a horrible epidemic of suicides around him. I'm asking you, what if instead of getting a job in the sex industry, what if he would just been homeless and got addicted to heroin? Which one do you he think wasn't would have been better? Or to I didn't say he was, but let's say that he. That, those are the two options. Which one do you think would be better? I don't, I don't think. I think that you won't even engage with that hypothetical. You don't no, think it's think, ever possible that could you become think, homeless or do sex work? These are never. Decisions I think that make? if someone is forced into yeah. sex work Her destiny because otherwise they would be homeless and on heroin, that is another reason why sex work is bad for society, and we should instead work on helping people who are homeless. And we addicted. all agree here. I think all of us agree here. We're all big fans of big social Which one? Is worse though. That. Which one? Which one is worse? Which one would be worse? They're both bad. They're both. That's they're both not an bad. answer to which one is worse. So they're equally bad. Sex, sex, sex is worse. worse because most by homeless people. Worse. By what have measure? Sex of, do you think if Joshua Bloom would have become homeless and addicted to smack, do you think that he would have had the same chance of finding a wife and kids? Or I know no. people who are former drug addicts. Do you see how you addicts didn't answer the question all? You said like, well, I know, or I feel, I don't. I'm no, just asking I'm, a question. That's silly. Even if it is worse, it doesn't make sex work not. I didn't say. I just wanted to know if you can even admit this. What are you trying to prove? This thing is worse. So I'm just. What should be an easy question to answer? You're sitting here saying like, do you? think it's ethical to have a uh, simulated child oh, pornography like being saying, masturbated while that, you get eaten out oh, by a horse and you loaded no, your shot at Destiny? That's, that's like saying what's Destiny. worse, being a hitman or being homeless. Destiny, like, child I can answer that question. Destiny. Yeah, we can, I can engage in that, but what's that's worse. Child sexual assault material uh, is everywhere. 
So it's not We're this not like random curious, hypothetical. I was just curious if you could answer questions. It's What's worse, being homeless and addicted to heroin <laughs> or doing sex work? I was just curious if you had to answer that. I think they're both harmful. Yeah, it's, I okay. think it's, you don't ways. I think it's a worse that's crime to be raped than it is to have to be homeless. Yeah. Hmm. And I consider okay. it rape as the and exploitation of well yeah. that. That's well said. That's well said. Let's do this. Why don't we each give you a one minute closing statement and then we're going to wrap up the show. Trent, you start, then Lila, then Jasmine, then Destiny, and then we're going to wrap closing statement uh i'd like to thank everyone for being here today uh man this is destiny is a lot more animated than the last time i blame the girls on that one uh but uh destiny started animation today well it was <laughs> it was it was uh i think it was i think it was uh, legit, but you know what um, jazz one. I, I think ultimately what uh, i would want people to consider from this to to go and, and look at the data and just to ask if sex work of prostitution and pornography are bad for society look at what it actually is not an illusion of what it is go online go and look at the most popular search for things on porn ha pornhub x hamster cam sites what prostitutes say that women uh, so what prostitutes say that men usually request from them it's violent degrading and so it takes sex and it cheapens it and makes it ultimately meaningless and so then it loses its power to be that amazing bonding force that unites people together and create a new human life. Like sex, it makes a new person. So of course it's gonna attach people together intimately. We don't want therapists and doctors having sex with people. Sex is designed to attach people because when a baby is born, it's really good, hey, if the people who created this child are bonded together in some way, and sex helps to do that. But if you turn sex into work, it destabilizes the important role it plays in society and it leads to degradation, abuse, and all the things that we've, that we've listed. And that's why I think people should see past the illusion to see the ugly reality of it, so. And I would say, I, of course, I think sex work, um, pornography, prostitution is bad for society. It's bad for everybody involved. I think the data not, just show, not only shows that, but people's life experience shows that. I think many people today are dissatisfied with their dating relationships, marriages struggle. Um, we've talked about the mass use of pornography and porn consumption and porn addiction. I know that's a word that you guys don't like, but porn addiction in addition to child sexual abuse material proliferating all of this. And I think that's the consequence of forgetting the beautiful design of what sex is for and disrespecting and cheapening sex. And I think that we should actually elevate sex and celebrate it more. It's not puritanical. It's actually saying um, reject that viewpoint as well. Say sex is something that's beautiful and good, designed for love, designed to bring life into the world. And that's amazing and should be celebrated. And it's so sad that people's sexual experiences and their, their orgasm is now being um, caught up in all of the horrific social harms that we've been talking about at this table, when instead they should be caught up in a beautiful relationship of love. And Our, that's what yeah, we're fighting for. So I, I appreciate you guys having the conversation. Yeah, Apologies for my cough <laughs> during it and your patience. Thank you for your patience with it. But I hope we can, I, I want people to be happy and people to flourish. And I think if and, we, we and see sex as a Married design, couples to have be simultaneous orgasms. Pope St. John Paul II writes about that in Love and Responsibility, the idea. Yeah, I mean, it, imagine so. if we focus More. instead on healthy marriages and healthy sex and marriage and beautiful sex and marriage instead of Doesn't have to always be simultaneous, but that's a, that's, a, that's a plus. So. Wait, was, do you think, wait, did you say can oral sex happen in marriage or is that not okay? Oral sex can happen in marriage. Um, well, you have to define those terms. Well, I'll explain what I was going to continue with. I believe my position is that provided it leads to, um, you know, my view of um, my faith is provided it leads to the ultimate um, potential for procreative but, act. But even but if you thought, of plays, even if you thought that oral copulation is fine in marriage, it wouldn't follow your ethic would include paying for yeah, porn Yeah, you don't have to agree with me on that to say sex work is bad. Yeah. So... Yeah, so I would just, again, thank you everybody for coming here. I would just say that this isn't to say there are no harms associated with sex work. This is just to say that just because there are some harms associated, just like with the Second Amendment, just like with the First Amendment, when people, societies that give people the freedom in order to, um, in order to ex like control their sexual lives the way they see fit, tend to do better anytime. The majority <laughs> of the data shows that when you try to ban these things or when you try to restrict these things or when you don't see sex work as work, it leads to more negative outcomes than good. I would also say that... Um, 
um, the way the sexual repression and, and you know those types of things, seeing sex as this thing and then anything outside of that is supposed to be bad and terrible, does lead to negative consequences. Repression doesn't seem, repression causes a lot of the same problem people say porn does, like erectile dysfunction, negative body image issues, shame, et cetera. Um, the, and if you look at like the states and the areas that consume the most porn, it is the most religious state. So this idea, it's really fine and dandy to say sex should be this thing and no one should have it outside. It's just not the reality. The reality is people do seek out this stuff and people are going to do this and there are people who are going to be willing to provide it even if they would rather be rock stars if they had the choice. So the question is, how can we make it so that this thing is the least damaging to society possible and that is to accept it and to um, not criminalize it and demonize sex outside of marriage, whatever. <laughs> Destiny, your closing <laughs> statements. Yeah, uh, thanks for the conversation. Um, we didn't really get into to it, the, but I feel like um, I feel like a lot of this conversation uh, ends up grounding out in what we view sex as being for, which we didn't really talk about at all because we kind of went into all the data and the stats. Um, personally, I think that even if the data and the stats showed that recreational sex was good, I don't think that would change either of your guys' positions at all. If, if more people reported like happier sexual activities or if marriages stayed together, more people had more recreational sex, I don't think that would change either of your positions. Um, the thing that scares me, I guess, about somebody being critical of a like consensual based position for figuring out if activities are moral or immoral is if they reject that framework and instead they go with what they call their own moral framework, I think that very quickly you can get to a person saying, well, alcohol should be immoral. There's no reason to drink ever. Does it really help? And it leads to all these negative outcomes like car accidents and alcoholism and abuse and gambling's no good. Obviously, you're wasting your money. Sugar is bad, look at obesity rates, cardiovascular disease killing everybody, video games are horrible, it's a waste of time for kids, they should be playing uh, sports so they should be doing things outside um, there's like, marijuana is horrible, the Olymp Olympics are horrible, the athletes are too young, it does damage to their body, like, I think we can get into this world, we can very quickly say that all of these things, because we can't trace like a particular good and then we can look at all these negative outcomes. We can say these things are bad. I think it's better to look at a, a, at a healthier way to build ways that we can interact with each other in society. I think that a consent-based form where we consent to activities and if somebody wants to sell sex and they can do it in a healthy way and somebody wants to buy it and they can do it in a healthy way, I don't think we should get in front of that or in between that transaction. And we should let people conduct themselves the way that they want to, assuming there aren't these mass horrible outcomes happening in society. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Okay, guys, last call. Hit the like button, please, on your way out. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Uh, thank you to everyone who soup chats and donates and supports the show. Thank you to the uh, wonderful panel for uh, making it out tonight, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll uh, maybe a round two, maybe a different topic. Um, if you're, uh, oh, let's see. We are going to be live again, 5 p.m. Pacific on Sunday. Oh. I, yeah. I do want to say one thing I want to thank you guys. It's funny, a, a different topic. Mm. I do think it's interesting. We didn't get a chance to have any common ground, but I do think mm. like between this table, a lot of us have common ground. Like there's a group of people on the internet, men, who might say, <laughs> yeah, the um, promiscuity and these sorts of things, it's okay for, like it's the <laughs> position between ours. You're saying it's okay for everybody. We're saying it's bad for everybody. They're saying it's bad for women, good for men. I think we actually have common ground. We all agree that that's actually a bad position. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to throw out there actually a common ground between us that that's an untenable position that they I would agree. have. Yeah. Should we just yeah. tag on an extra 30 minutes and just no. talk about abortion? <laughs> but, well, but, but that's, abortion a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a teaser. We might, maybe we could have an even friendlier, okay. friendlier conversation about that and other okay. things. Okay, because a lot of people so. have been asking for another uh, Destiny and Lila Abortion uh, debate. Abortion yeah. debate, yeah. <laughs> so. I'll block out eight hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we'll be live again Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I might try to convince Destiny to do a one one-on-one interview tonight after the show. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. What, do, what's the your chat on your phone? Is that... What's it's my is that D, D, and That's not G, happening. I don't know why you keep saying it's going to be that DG? Yeah, what, what are they called? The what, what are DDLG, your, da, uh, did, Big did Daddy, it? Little Girl or oh something. Oh my God, yeah, okay, you know? okay. We do what that, do you think, yeah. if, if I were to ask them, like, can you pull out your phone? Like, are they down to have you do a like I have, a, I live a, one a dinner on one? date at 8.30 that I'm on my way to right now. Is so. it with a... Man, is it with a man or a woman? It's with a woman. I don't. I, don't, well, I thought you. Were, I, don't I thought we were going to get dinner, not like a date, but I thought. I love you. Good talk. All right, guys. We'll see you again Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific. 07's in the chat. Good night, guys. We'll see you uh, <laughs> next time.